It's not the profit, it's the pleasure on Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever recorded. So get the Knights of the Old Code together, because today we're going hunting for a dragon heart. Let's go. To all the Knights of the Old Code. Wherever they may be. The old code, is that like where you put uh, 8005? Yeah, that's right. That one. 80085 on your Mac 64. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that our zip code? <laughs> is, is that the code or the code? It's an older code, sir, but it still checks but it still out. Checks out. <laughs> or, or is that the unzip code? I love it. Well, welcome in, guys. We are here, oddly enough, talking about another dragon movie. Two weeks after the last We've dragon, had a lot of dragon movies. <laughs> I'm, this is me two dragon movies in a row. I know. Welcome back to Dragon Movies Rule. <laughs> you didn't even get a. Br- you, I got to do one in between. You're going straight. Yeah, from I'm dragon going movies straight to dragon to dragon. dragon. To dragon. This oh, one, I'm sorry, man. This one has an actual dragon. It does. This is true. Two. This is not two a, actual dragons. That's right. Not a snake dragon. But we've yet to see two dragons fight each other. That still hasn't happened. That has not happened. No. no. But what are you going to do? Clint Bush is in the house. The dirt farmer farmed all the dirt last week, right? Uh, we did every single bit of it. And farmed now? again. Nothing's growing. Complete waste of time. Still nothing. Still nothing. And he's just going to run some cars on it. We're and just going to race for the some next cars one. and wait right. for the next cycle. Yeah. All right, brother. Fertilize we, it a little bit. <laughs> we, yeah. You, we made dragon, dragon poop. If you on, on the it. out of boundaries grew corn and they had to drive in between the corn. I was stuff. thinking even grass. You know? Sure. It's so like a yeah, grass something. infield would be yeah. cool. Yeah. Lay some sod. Yeah, no. Can't. Speaking of laying sod, Mel Vandy, the shoe salesman, is here. What's up, buddy? Yeah. I, you, you, no one loves laying sod more than you. Absolutely, it's a second to dragons. He he cut out a whole strip in his floor of his shoe shop and laid sod so that customers could feel what it felt like to walk on the grass and on a floor. Yeah. Well, That's if impressive. you don't, if you don't remember, yeah. I brought you World Series Wrigley Field sod. I remember that, and which I promptly gave to my aunt Sue, who is a massive Cubs fan, and she planted it in her yard. So part of that is now part of her yard forever. Mine as well. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we, and also we've got the mayor in session. Hi, I'm here. Mr. I, Mueller, yeah, how are you? I'm good. I awesome. am not doing back-to-back dragon movies, thank God. It is a little weird because right now in Burlington, there is a mayoral race happening. There is. You're not one of them. I'm not one of them because no. I don't live in the city. Oh, yeah. I got, you got to live in the city. You got to live in the city. So yeah. I have to settle for being mayor of BMR. Mayor of BMR. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, what's really better. the better job? And honestly, it's better. It's a better job. Yeah, it pays better, too. Well, for those of you who never joined us, we are going to go through Dragonheart 1996 scene by scene. First, we're going to give you the vitals, tell you who directed, wrote in it, starred in it, all that fun stuff. And then we're going to give you our opinions at the end, whether we think it's a good movie, a bad movie, or a bad movie that rules. And we're also going to give out some awards, which, you know, we'll see how it goes as we go through this. But there's going to be even some changes on the award side that is a surprise for everybody. All right. So. Oh, I'm, pr- I'm prepared. I fair change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but since I don't prepare at all, I feel like I am You're very well right prepared. Up, right in your yeah. lane. Yeah. You'd be good. No worries. Well man. prepared then. What do you guys say we just dive straight into the vitals then of this thing? We've got a movie directed by Rob Cohen. Not one of the Cohen brothers, one of those great excellent Well, he might directors, have a brother. But, he, I mean, not the Cohen brothers. Oh, you, you no. know, the, a different Cohen brother. Directing duo that have made, like, Raising Arizona and True Grit and uh, just tons and tons of classic films. Uh, uh, Big Lebowski. Ah, uh, right? yeah. You know, good stuff. Uh, this is Rob Cohen, who went on after this to direct the movie Daylight, featuring S- Stallone. Probably the best-known movie that he directed was the very first Fast and the Furious movie. Uh, was a Rob Cohen picture, but he didn't do any of the sequels after that. Well, well it, it was the best, best one. Was it the best one? I Well, I've I seen them all so. exactly one time, so I don't remember much of it. I, I enjoyed them all for what they are. Okay. But yes, their uh, realism is not their forte. No, the only thing I remember about the first one is the is the cars torquing up off their front wheels at the start of the race. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the one where they were like swinging with a vine to like launch the car? Oh, that was like yeah. part twelve or That's something. The, yeah, that was, like, yeah. That was like Fast and the Furious eighty four. Right, like and that. the Temple of Doom or something. Right, something. Yeah. Uh, movie was written by Charles Edward Pog, and uh, probably best known, he wrote The Fly, starring Jeff Goldblum back in the 80s, mm, okay. and co-written by Patrick Reed Johnson, whose really only other writing credit of note is Spaced Invaders, which I think somebody in the Discord was just talking about a few days ago, if I don't, if I remember correctly. Uh, though that's the writing duo here. Movie star Dennis Quaid. Sorry, just fixing my chair. Uh, movie star Dennis Quaid, Sean Connery, Dina Meyer, and Dave Thwiths. Thwiths, I think is how you say his name, along with a few others, which we'll get into. 
Here we go for the he says the budget for this flick. <laughs> Yes. Fifty-seven million dollars. Yeah, they yeah. Uh, they spent some cash. Yeah. How uh, much do you think that CGI costs today? Oh, way more. Right. I mean, well, no, I'm saying same quality. Oh, same like, quality. You can get that done at a high school. Yeah. Yeah, I can have the kids Probably in a filmmaking class at BHS I mean, and a uh, trip to McDonald's. <laughs> this might be a little bit of an exaggeration, Listen, obviously. Big Macs for everybody. You make. We need a dragon right now. <laughs> we'll have the uh, we'll have the pizza delivery guy from the church group come in. Perfect. Ooh. That's, that's me. <laughs> oh, hey. They think I'm the pizza guy because I'm always showing up at the school yeah, with like, pizza. Oh, that's the Domino's guy. Like, no, Domino's I don't work guy. at Domino's. Then why do you have a red and blue jacket? That's just with a domino on it. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like their. I enjoy domino swag. Sue me, okay? I mean, only employees can wear domino stuff. Corporate swag he's, is big now. He's got the Domino's I mean, hot bag. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I just because I like keeping well, he, my food he wants warm. to get his pizza home. That's I mean, all it is. you don't eat cold pizza. Fifty-seven million dollar budget. Box what office was hundred and fifteen million dollars. Wow, that, that'll work, but barely. Barely, yeah. yeah. But you know, fine. Uh, movie is currently. A 6.4 on IMDb, which Fantastic. ties it for number 32 with us. And the only other six, we've only done one other 6.4 movie ever, okay. which was right on the wall up there Remo Williams, Remo. The Adventure oh. Begins, was our only other 6.4. Right. And uh, here's where it qualifies for a 60% audience score and a 50% Rotten Tomatoes. So it's kind of split yeah. across the board, but it is rotten by critics. Are we going to reflect that here? Yes. I don't know. No. I mean, we'll see. Maybe. We've got four people here. Don't I worry. reflect that here. Well, you reflect it internally. Yes. All right. Perfect. Struggle's real. You know, a house divided against itself cannot stand, so you're going to have to plant your flag at some point whether oh, you I'll, think it's good. I'll plant the flag. All right. Perfect. Well, for those of you who would like a way to get in touch with the show, there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. We'll do mailbag segments where we'll answer your questions. So what I want you guys to do is send us an email, please. If you haven't yet before, we love hearing from new emailers. Not that we don't love the guys that send us stuff all the time and the gals that do, but you know, let's let's get some let's get some new blood in the in the mailbox. This show is trash at gmail.com is the way that you reach us. Or you can send us a voicemail at 262-757-8567. We'll answer both of those in our mailbag segments that we release periodically. The other way, if you want to be part of the foundation of what we're doing here at BMR, you want to back us, uh, we would, you know, it help us to build what we're doing. We're trying to constantly iterate, trying constantly to, to grow the show and to offer more things. And so we have three, four other podcasts that we give to our patrons. You just go to patreon.com slash badmoviesrule. You can sign up there and get access to all those other shows on top of the now raw and uncut ad-free versions of our episodes. So going forward now, we've done this the last couple of weeks, the the uncut feed where I haven't edited it, not a second out of it, it is ad-free, obviously, and bleep-free, you can now get on our Patreon. Isn't that dangerous? <laughs> In what way? Bob episodes? Is well, that what you're thinking? Potentially. Yeah. Or tangents? Or tangents. Yeah, well, there's like one of the first ones I put out there, because I said, look, I, I only have so many man hours, and I'm running right. out of them because I put a lot of time in on BMR, which is fun. I love doing it. And, but somebody, a couple people had, had emailed and said, hey, can we get an ad-free uncut version? And I said, like, only if it's literally like uncut, because it doesn't take a lot of work for me to just upload the feed without a change right. to it. So you're going to get all of the the sneeze breaks and the <laughs> coughing <laughs> and the, uh, let me think about that for the, 10 seconds before the, I say something. The ridiculously <laughs> inappropriate uh, yeah. cuts from Bob. Right, that kind of yeah. thing. So gotcha. Some of the episodes we, I mean, Dragon Wars was almost was like three minutes difference and almost barely, you know, basically the exact same show. Right. But some shows are a whole lot different <laughs> than what goes out. So, you know. So the one where you we'll tried see. to kill people. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. So if you want to hear that, you got to join our Patreon. Again, all those are in the show notes, patreon.com slash bad movies rule. And right before we get to the plot here, we're going to go through the scene by scene. All right, guys, you all ready to jump into Dragon Heart? Let's do it. Let's do before it. we do it, I need to ask a question because I feel like it's that kind of movie. And you know, we went through this with Ernest, right? Ah. I feel like this is the kind of movie that if you grew up with it, you love this movie, right? See, we couldn't have possibly grown up with this because this was at the end of high school. No, but I know? mean, but like, yeah, I know what you're saying. whoever did. Like kids, we were yeah. kids of the 80s, kids of the 90s, whatever. Right. But... So my question is, had any of you seen this in the 90s? Absolutely. You had seen yep. it. Okay. Is it first time for you, Mal? No. Never seen it. Never seen it? 
Ryan? After I watched it, I was like, oh, yeah, I think I did see this like when I was in high school. Okay, I had never seen it. So at least two of us, it was first You put out the schedule, and I looked at my movies for this one. I was like, oh, I have been a good boy. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. So I think this is the kind of thing, though, you might have a different opinion about it if you saw it when you, even as a teenager when you were young. If you never saw it, now as a middle-aged cynic like, you know, me and Mel. I have a small (laughs) opinion of a new teenager who has never seen it before, but saw it. All right, excellent. So it Pass the Katie test. Well, we'll find out as we get well, there. Well, I mean, I can't tell you that. Passed, Don't tell me yet. But it, you know, didn't but, fail as hard as others. All right, all right, fine, fine. Yeah, you enough. know me in fantasy movies. I, that's why I put you on this, Mel. <laughs> I know you love this crap. Oh yeah. I know he's always running around the house with his elf ears on, going lightning bolt, lightning bolt, and two throwing damage, stuff at his damage. kid. Two damage. Plus four. <laughs> plus four armor. That didn't hurt me. You can't get me. I have plus four armor. You have no idea. <laughs> he just, Mel goes home. It's Final Fantasy cosplay after yeah. it's done at the shoe store. Just I'm, hey, as long as your wife's and, into it, you know, yeah. it's all good. Hey. She isn't, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have a basement now. <laughs> I so wanted the, so uh, the movie stars Dennis Quaid, who opens the movie, and he's a knight. And I immediately thought of Monty Python and the Holy Grail when the guy was like, old woman. Like, man, man, <laughs> uh, man, sorry, I'm 37. What? I'm 37. I'm not old. Right. Well, I can't just call you man. Well, you could say Dennis. Well, I, didn't I didn't know you, know you were called, called Dennis. Dennis. That's right. The whole thing. I just wanted him to be Sir Dennis like yeah. because the whole time. Right. But sadly, his name is Bowen, which is way lamer. But I may just call him yeah. Sir Dennis for this. Th- that's fine. I mean, this Jeff movie. Speakman was Jeff in right. his movie. So. So Dennis, uh, so the movie starts off with Dennis uh, doing some kind of accent while he fights this little kid. <laughs> I, Beetlejuice? <laughs> he was doing Beetlejuice? I don't know. Yeah. Before Beetlejuice? I mean, no, same time. We are going to, almost was a little bit of pirate in there and a little bit of trying to be Irish, but he's also like, hey, man, it I'm going to go with the most, babe. And then it, it goes it away goes for away. a while. Yeah. Yeah. And then for a while, he's just, oh, it's Dennis Quaid. And then they'll cut to a scene. It must have been the order they shot the scenes in yeah. isn't the same order, obviously, as the movie. And so with the ones where he's trying to do an accent and failing miserably, probably were near the beginning of the shooting right. schedule. Yeah. And then after a while, he just said, I'm not going to do this nope. anymore. I'm going to do my regular voice. <laughs> just going to be Dennis Quaid. <laughs> I didn't even recognize him. You didn't recognize Dennis? Not until I looked at IMDb. Okay. Well, not a big, not a big uh, inner space fan, or yeah, you know, I like inner space. I like, I really like frequency. frequency. Frequency is a good movie. Great. Yeah. Well, of course you like frequency. Well, yeah. Okay. It's got two of the best actors of all time in it, right? Jim Caviezel and Dennis Quaid. It says freak right in the title. That's right. That's Mel. <laughs> <laughs> So he's smacking around this little kid and enjoying it w- a little too much. I mean, yeah. he deserved it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. is he not yeah. supposed to? I I think that no. if you know that this is the kid, you would enjoy smacking him around a little yeah. bit. You know, anybody with that haircut, that emo Phillips. Oh, gosh. Are we going to talk about that right now? Yes. The worst the hair. Hair, the even, worst haircut. Even the grown-up version of him. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> the Absolutely worst terrible. haircut. Can you imagine of having to time. walk around with that thing on until shooting was done? There was a couple of wide shots where like the light the lighting would hit it weird, like when he's in the dungeon and stuff, and it'd look even worse somehow. <laughs> like we're supposed to hate this guy, right? Yeah. But legitimately, if I saw him on the street, I would hate this guy. I hated him from his stupid hair from minute one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, I don't like you know, before you even knew if he was good or bad. I didn't care. He was the bad guy. Yeah. He sucked. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting smacked around by Dennis Quaid until Brian Thompson. Who played uh, very famously the villain in Cobra, right? That was oh, yeah. sh- carving his knife so intensely. And he also was one of the uh, German guys in Three Amigos. This is his third time now on BMR. Brian Thompson playing Brock rides up on his horse and he's like, hey, the king wants his son to see him rape and pillage some peasants in a village. So yeah. pack him up. He's got to get out of here and go do that right now. And the kid's like, sweet. Yeah. Let's go. Blood Let's loss. Go. All right. Blood <laughs> yeah. Loss. yeah. Exactly. So they ride off uh, to the battle at the peasant village, okay? And the son is super into it, right? He's watching, he's like, oh man, this is looking. Oh, I would love to see you down there. Yeah. That's right. You your, would be the greatest. You would be the greatest. Your your sword would be amazing. <laughs> That's right. I don't think he's talking about like, <laughs> steel, you know what I mean? Why are you so like, into this, kid? Mm-hmm. And Bowen's like, there's a there's a difference between bravery and butchery, I think, yeah. is, you know, what he says. And yeah. he's like, watch what your, you know, your father sucks, basically, and don't be like this. You know, follow the old code because when you're older, don't be doing this nonsense. He's just literally down there just murdering peasants and uh, don't suck like your dad, basically. Now, 
all of a sudden, the king is just suddenly riding through the village by himself. Yeah, because that would happen. Everyone's yeah, he's a, totally plausible. He's the guy with the torch lighting the thatched roofs on fire, right? Like, <laughs> right. no. Yeah, he that's because he's going to come down off the hillside to do that. <laughs> it's like, he's going to uh, have the peasants torch their own town. He's right. lucky Trogdor didn't take him out. Trogdor! Trogdor. The Burninator. The Burninator. Bro. All right, I'm missing the reference. Who? Burninating the peasants. Right, well, what's it from? Strong, strong bad. Oh, strong, strong bad. bad. A home oh, star runner. Okay. Gotcha. That's that's an old cut, dude. That's an old cut. <laughs> Antioch. He, he Illinois. Just, Antioch. He's just rolling around. He's looking around like, oh, there's no one here, even though there was just a battle here five seconds ago. Guess I'll just light these huts on fire. He's like casually burning down people's homes. And then all of a sudden, surprise attack out of all the hay. Here come the peasants. A thousand peasants pour out. Yeah. Where are all the king's dudes? It's it's all it's two hundred v one in the middle of this village. Right. That's what happens when you get cocky. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but where are all the other guys? Because there was a ba- the way this is cut is stupid. They were outside the battle. walls of the little peasant village, and then there there's nothing happening. They started riding back because they killed all the right. peasants. Yeah, they were uh, quelling an uprising. Is what it was. Right. It yeah. wasn't just a a battle against peasants. They were trying to revolt. I thought it was no, just like these down. This is how we entertain ourselves on the weekend. Did they did they move on from the pillaging <laughs> to the raping? <laughs> not yet. Well, at least not. Well, that they maybe that's why they were maybe. tied up. Because I think it was a P, it was a PG or PG thirteen. They, oh. they tied, they they tied really themselves up to get ready for the raping. That's what they did. They just tied themselves up. Yeah. And uh, Einan sees his dad in trouble, so he's like, oh, I'm going to ride in to save him. And Bowen is unable to stop Einan, and Einan's a kid at this point, and he rides in to try and save his dad. But by the time he gets there, dad has been killed. Yeah, they yank dad off his I, horse and stomp a mud hole in him. Right. Yeah. I love like how in Mad Max, Thun- or, uh, uh, Road Warrior, they rode the bus in front to like yeah. stop you from getting in and out. They did the same thing, yeah, with, same a thing. with a horse and cart. With a horse, with a horse and, and cart. cart. Like, like, no, ah, you can't get in. Sorry. Come on, man. Like, oh, Foiled no. again. <laughs> Dog. Horse and cart, damn it. All the peasants then run off to continue fighting, and this little girl comes out of one of the huts, trips, falls into Einan, who has just like wrenched the crown away from his father. His father is dying. These people run away from the dying king. Yeah. Einan goes over there, sees that his father is sitting there, and there's the crown. He goes and grabs the crown. Right. Father, like, oh, I'm not dead yet. I'm not quite you'll, dead. You'll be, you'll be stone dead in a minute. You know, he's like, give it to me. It's mine. I and might get better. Steals the crown from him. <laughs> <laughs> just he like does. absolutely steals you think he's going to be like oh father i'm going to miss no. you and they're going to have party no, he wanted like, his want turn he's like give me that sh- he <laughs> wanted know. his turn for the raping and pillaging yeah, yeah. like literally <laughs> yeah i'll show these peasants and so as soon as he's wrenched the crown away this little girl comes out of a hut falls over lands on top of Einan, who is f- then thrown forward into a like a stake sticking out and gets impaled on it osha yeah. would have been perfect Really pissed off at whoever designed this post. With it was a heart half level. a knife sticking out at heart right. level. Heart level, yeah. Uh, somebody just walked Osho by and smacked it there. there. This is fine. Osha was already there. They already <laughs> find him. They hadn't cha- got it changed out yet. Right, yeah. they had sixty days. Yeah, but, <laughs> sixty days. <laughs> you can guarantee they had an eye wash station. <laughs> I guarantee you they did. Uh, the girl, as he, he turns around and he looks at her, he's like, "Oh, what the frick?" She takes off her helmet and she's a ginge. And he's just like, oh, a ginger freaking killed me. He's like so disappointed. Like, oh. I had a soul. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never understand. <laughs> they wheel the dying body of this boy basically into the queen, right? At the back right. of the castle. Yep. And the queen shoes everyone away. Am I the only one that clapped? Did you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You're like, all right, who's going to? Well, I guess we need him to survive because we need to have a bad guy. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So the queen's like, all right, everybody get out of here. And the the only people in there are her and, and Sir Dennis. And he's like, what are we going to do? She's like, it's cool. I know some dragons know some cool magic and crap. Yeah, she's looking at her little dragon tchotchkes on the shelf. Yeah. Like, ah, I got an idea. And he's like, hold on a second. Yeah, right. I think there's some dragons in a cave around the corner. Might yeah, be they, able to. I think they, that dragon that uh, kicked the fraggles out of the right. cave down there. He probably <laughs> can do something for us. It was, it was a fraggle cave for it sure. It totally dude. was. It was lit like it, too. It was. <laughs> They like they bring him into the mechanic or so they yeah. wheel him in there and the dragon I just wanted to be like, Well, there's your problem right there. <laughs> He's yeah. got a hole He's in got his, a hole heart. In your got chest. Stabbed in his heart. Right. That's not gonna work. That's gonna be five hundred for labor, but you know, I'll be able to fix this in fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah, with free towing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you tow it in and then yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, mechanics, am I right? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just think of the healthcare system back then. Yeah. 
Oh, this was the healthcare system. You bring him to a magical animal or he dies. Yeah. That's the healthcare system. <laughs> you I think mean, they had surgeons or doctors? Yeah. They would like spit in the people's wounds to get the blood away for like, oh, hold on, I'm cleaning this off. I mean, they have leeches and, you know, yeah, throw a few leeches potions. on them and yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Potions. potions. Yeah. Those helps. Potions. For it was, sure. Uh, it was uh, essential <laughs> oils. <laughs> you know, it's Those, pretty much oh, modern medicine. Much now, yeah. Uh, as they're wheeling him to the dragons, Bowen is like reciting the old code to him to try and keep him awake, right? And he's really trying to instill in him this old code, which is the code of Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. You'll be right? you'll be good enough for me to smack you around in no time. That's here. right. They get into the dragon cave, and the dragon at first is like to the queen, he's like, "No, your husband sucks. Piss off." I'm not. Yeah, except I'm not in Sean you. Connery's voice, not like the way I said it. Although, cool. Can I tell it quick? Actually, I'll, I'll save it for the post show. I got this re- yeah. line reminds your husband me. sucks. This reminds me of a, of a. A friend of mine met Sean Connery and had a similar interaction with him. But he <laughs> said, yes. He goes, uh, your husband sucks. Piss off. And she's like, no, 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 no. Queen's like, no, this, no, look, I swear he's going to be cool. Bowen has, Bowen has totally taught him how to not be a, a D-bag like my husband. Right. And so it's all, it's all legit. You know, No cap. Think, no, <laughs> no cap. You know. He's gonna. He's told him. He's he teached him how to be. He's teached him. He's teached, teached him. him. Teached him. He's teached him so hard how to be a knight of the old code. It's like it's like an Obi Wan situation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Obi Wan's trained Anakin, so he's no way he's gonna be evil. He absolutely can't be. Evil. He absolutely can't be. He is gonna be a hundred percent gooder. Right. So, so you're saying Star Wars ripped off Dragonheart? Uh, no. I'm, well. <laughs> I guess, in a way. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, in a way. In 1996. Wait, no. Well, because the, the prequels came out after. Prequels came out after. Yeah. Well, this is right, based on a true story. story. But Lucas wrote that in the yeah, 70s. I know. You know all that yeah. goes. Sure, right. Uh, so the dragon, Sean Connery dragon, goes, all right, fine. Give Einan half of his own heart, which now it's just dawning on me why the movie's called Dragon Heart. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. So he didn't say anything, but he did the thing. He did the thing. Right? He did Even the though thing. they didn't say it? Didn't say it. Like, oh, Dragonheart. Oh, my Dragon God. Heart. Oh my Dragon God. Heart, you guys. Come on. Everybody got that? All right. So <laughs> basically, this is how Einan survives. And, he, and the dragon makes him swear that he'll be gooder than Your, he was before. His words, not yours. That's right. Because Bowen's the one swearing. He's like, no, he the has, mom. she has to swear it. I can't do Connery, but, you know. Suck it, Trebek. That's all I can say. Uh, the rapist anyway. for 800, please. <laughs> I'll take the rapist for 800. That's therapists. Let me see the tits now. <laughs> Le tit déjeuner, or what is it? A- ape tit. <laughs> all right. Uh, Give me a dragon heart right, for so 400. He swears I'm going to be good. Yeah. Gets his heart fixed. Immediately as they're wheeling him out, he's like, Hey, Brock, you think we could enslave a bunch of people to build this castle back yeah, up? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's he's just getting wheeled out. Yeah. A m- immaculate uh, recovery here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, Done. amazing. Straight into douchery. I want a dragon heart. If I ever it's need a like heart, I'm fine a dragon. He drifted away years later. They're wheeling his ass more out years. of yeah. the cave. Okay. Yeah. And he's already like, oh man, can't believe- we need to rebuild this castle here. Like Ferris yeah. Bueller, he's like, they bought it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. As soon as it got out of the. Got my crown. It's going to get my castle. So they're putting people to work, okay? And immediately to build this. And one of the peasants is locked in this like stock thing, but it's like a mobile stocks, you know? And Einan, who's still a kid at this point, orders Brock to burn his eyeballs out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Completely reasonable. And Bowen has to ride in and save him. Masterfully, right? Yes. He's got a. He, he, he rides in and he's like, and and tackles Einan and Einan's like, how how dare you? He's like, don't make me kill you. Well, and you can tell at this point they've already not been. Uh, they've been estranged yeah. for some time already at this right. point because this isn't immediate. This is obviously you know we're rebuilding this. It's going on. Right. It's a few years later. He's older, but like okay, so he's been estranged from the king. Right. The king's bodyguard protection detail is around him all of his people and then right. he's able to just you know knock him off his horse and you know, right. beat him around throw him to the ground and you know say the old code damn it that's right yep. and i'm not saying anybody ripped him off but it's a, basically he's like don't make me kill you and he's like he goes Einan, your allegiance should be to the republic to democracy right. and then Einan's like if you're not with me then you're my enemy Star, Star Wars ending? Star Wars ending. <laughs> Bowen goes, only an a-hole deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. And he goes, you will try. All right? I mean, right. this is basically how the scene plays out. Yeah. yeah. It's totally Anakin and Obi-Wan. For sure. 100%. Yeah. All right. Just Either to- way, that kid sucks. Yeah. Still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> 
And his hair got worse, too. For sure. Just dumber and dumber. Bowen immediately rides to the dragon's cave, blames everything on the dragon. Yeah. Yeah. You sons of... I'm, you poisoned his soul. Yeah, I'm going to kill every single one of you. And if any of you show your faces, it was like cuts a promo on him like it's WWE, yeah. right? right? You know. And next Monday night in a steel cage, me and you, are. if I ever see a dragon, I'm going to kill him, all of them, until they're all gone, until they're all dead. And I'm like, dude... You knew he was a D-bag before all of this. You sucked as a mentor. Yes. Yeah. It's your fault. When you suck as a mentor, genocide yeah. is truly the only way to uh, get back. Blame it on somebody else. It wasn't your fault. Just right. kill all of those p- things, people, <laughs> animals, dragons in this case. <laughs> Just murder them all because it, it definitely wasn't him. Well, right. and Fraggles will be happy and get their cave back. <laughs> It was a pretty sweet cave. I love how Fraggle Rock nice. has become just a thing on the show. It was a nice cave, Stan. Ever since I brought up that Fraggle Rock line. Yeah, that was yeah, such a good that, joke that, 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 that you, you came up with. I totally one. Totally. definitely wasn't yeah. great joke. Not Joe at all. No, not at all. Not even close. <laughs> all right, this is where this is where we get the text screen. He's Tw- going to be pissed. He's, He's going to get chat. You assholes. 12 <laughs> years later, we get the big title yeah. screen. And we, we see this guy uh, play, paid by Pete, eh, played by Pete Postlewaite. Thwaite, I think it's like Postal Thwaite, is how you say his name. Close enough. Sure. Brother Nailed Gilbert. It. First try. Who's the first immediately, I'm watching them, Dana, and she goes, he, he's, he's trying to write on a donkey, right? Like he's riding a donkey and trying to write. And immediately I thought of myself, anytime I ever tried to do my homework on the school bus. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did you ever do that? And your handwriting was just like. I literally yeah, I mean, uh, both have the same kind of suspension. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I literally looking at this, was that Kramer? It's not Kramer, but. No, I, I, no, I, I literally was like, too. was that Kramer? My wife's like, no. No. It's not. It's not. It wasn't, <laughs> Absolutely it's Pete Postlethwaite. Yeah. But yes. He wasn't racist enough. He's trying to write <laughs> poems. Was that a dig on Michael Richards? Because I will have no Michael Richards slander. Only a little one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so a little Michael Richards slander <laughs> is okay. <laughs> <laughs> just so we've got, we clear. You had a hard stance on no. It's just then, a little. Okay. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah. It's a little. Fine. <laughs> the, a dragon that we don't see flies over Brother Gilbert as he's as he's riding, doing his homework on the donkey. And uh, you see you see a shadow come over, but we don't see the the dragon. Right. And he's chased by Bowen, who's got a little arrow, which also made me laugh. Like he's going to do anything to these massive dragons. And which way did he go? Which way? Which way? This way. He goes over the hill, and this is the uh, we can't afford to show you this, so this fight will be shown via Pete's facial reactions portion of the movie. Yeah. yeah it because worked. they were like, uh, we don't have money for another CGI dragon. Only the one. Just one. So it's just going to be dust flying up from behind the hill and reaction shots from Pete Pop. Yeah, they had to take uh, fine. footage of a 747 flying over. Right. That's pretty much what it was. Yeah. It made it look like a dragon. Make make it look like Here it dragon. comes, guys. Here's a plane. It's coming in low. Get ready. Hey, Fooled me. <laughs> finally, stand outside O'Hare forever here. We finally get yeah. this shot for the dragon movie. Uh, after the dragon is defeated and Sir Gilbert is just a gat, like I can't, you can't believe this guy just slayed a dragon. He's like, oh my gosh, you're the greatest person the coolest thing I ever saw. Coolest, it's the dopest crap I ever saw in my life. Jason Isaacs rides up, and this is our first Jason Isaacs movie where he's playing a legit part because he was in Resident Evil. He was uh, like the dude in the hazmat thing at the end, the doctor, and he was that cameo at the beginning of Electra where Electra kills him while oh, he's yeah, yeah. in the chair with the yep. gun and the whiskey or whatever. And so this is a full blown part for him. Uh, I'll always remember him as the bad guy from the Patriot. He was just a scumbag in that movie, and he's kind of a. I mean, whether he's you know Malfoy's father and Harry Potter or whatever, he's just a great character of playing dicks and like bad guys. And so like of course he's a huge turd in this movie. Yeah, Jason Isaacs. First time we see him, he rides up and he's like, "Hey, great job killing the dragon, but." Uh, we're not going to pay you, so f off because you should have just done this as a courtesy and get get out of here. Goodbye. He's the guy who looked like Lieutenant Dan with the mustache, right? Yeah, he's, okay. the, he's the dude that is the came up with the idea for a road tax. Yeah, you know, right, right. after the scene, after he heard so the talk. roads are still free, aren't they? Yeah. Or did he tax those too? Right, and then he yeah. immediately road goes tax? to Ein and he's oh, like, "I'm on a road." What a great tax. idea! And, and Illinois idea. is like, "F yeah, <laughs> let's do more of that." <laughs> <That's what> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, paying for the pleasure of using Illinois roads. <sighs> yeah, anybody that lives in Illinois, man, let me tell you. Idiots. Idiots. Except for our viewers who live in Illinois who are amazing and just haven't had the opportunity just kidding, to I'm leave from yet. Illinois originally, both of us? I hate it. But Mel lives there still, and I don't know why, but that's fine. I think he has to. You have to. 
I got tenure. That's what I'm saying. Uh, all right. Anyway, so we now cut to grown up King Einan, who is now being played by uh, Mr. Thuis. I think is how you say his name. Uh, grown up King Einan visits the quarry where everyone is slaving away, and Jason Isaacs is with him because he's like, "Hey, road tax, you know that whole thing." And he's got Brock Brian Thompson is with him, and they're just riding down to the quarry. This is where Dina Meyer finally shows up, and I was ch- one of my favorite. Not very well known actresses. She hasn't done a lot of She is so talented. She's awesome. <laughs> oh, she is okay. amazingly talented. I love her. She was smoking talent. Mess, or best known as, as Diz in Starship Troopers. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and she was in Bats and she's been in a few other movies, but this is, I mean, Starship Troopers is the thing that everybody knows her from. Service I mean, she guaranteed like, citizenship. Joey, I'm doing my part. Yep. Uh, she was Joey's girlfriend for a few episodes on Friends, mm-hmm. too, yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. 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 For sure, and she's still hot. She's like awesome. Fifty. I know. I love her. On one of these, I ever see she, they're they're always at these cons, and I just saw one recently where they did a, a uh, Casper Van Dien, a bunch of Starship Troopers people, Dina Meyer, uh, Michael Ironside, all did a con together. But it's never at the cons around us. It's like in Kansas City or you know California or, or Atlanta or somewhere. I'm like, no one comes to the Chicago con anymore. I don't know why. Why does no one want to come to Chicago? Just continuing our it sucks. Road tax. Just just road to get there. Continuing yeah. our uh, hatred towards Illinois in this episode. Well, just, they if you didn't know, to the ticket price. <laughs> if you didn't know bmr is recorded in wisconsin all right here we go for those of you who don't know now you know all right so dina meyer shows up yes she tries to talk to her peasant dad and he's like i told you not to come down here this is you know we're all slaving away down here Einan just starts firing arrows at like his water cup right and I, at this point this is the guy that had killed his father yeah this is the guy who uh he was bothering when uh, Bronin showed up. This yep. is the guy now who, you know, that he let free. Now he's old. This is the guy now who's old and interned here and appears to be blind. So apparently right. they got his eyes out, but not by burning them out. But, no. And like legitimately, it's like, are there no other old men for you to bother? Like, dude, really, how is it this guy every scene? He's just trying to take a drink and they shoot the water cup and then it just shows them galloping up like, like a you know oh, bunch of losers. Great shot, sir. And he's like, how about how about now the bucket? Oh yes, sir. Double or nothing. And he hits the bucket, and he just they're just down there to do nothing but terrorize these people. There's yeah. no other reason. They're not down here to inspect anything. This kid's like he's like the kid on the ant hill with the magnifying glass. Right. This is right. this is how he rules over these peasants. Yep. He is. is who, who can I mess with today? He is a piece of shit. That's exactly what it is. Human garbage. And he straight up kills the old man, the dad. So Dina Meyer walks up to her. And they flirt with maybe shooting her, but they don't. And she pleads with him. And right after she gets done with her impassioned plea, he just shoots him, him yeah. right uh, in the chest. Death is a release, not death, a punishment. Death yeah. is a release. And they ride off like a bunch of turds. Yeah. God, that guy sucks. He does. Yeah, everything about that. Even the way they ride horses, I might want to punch him in the face. Yeah. Are they riding the horses properly? Well, I think he had the saddle turned around backwards. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, we cut back and Brother Gilbert is following uh, Look, no hands. Sir Dennis Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brother Gilbert's following Dennis Quaid around like, bro, I am going to write the dopest song of all time about your exploits. I got you tell me everything. I'm going to make you immortal. You're going to be famous. It's going to be incredible. And Dennis Quaid's like, leave me alone. I don't yeah. Care. Well, NWA actually uh, based their first couple songs on his entire catalog. Is that what, on Sir Gilbert's entire catalog? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> he was, dude, he comes down, he sits on a rock next to the river, right? And he's like, he's like, all right, hold on. I'm going to scratch out these dope lyrics right here for you. And he's got his little pen of right. The rock starts to move because right he's sitting. on top of his dome. He's on a dragon. He's got a freestyle right, right there. On just top right of his, there. He's, end up si- he's sitting on a dragon. He gets thrown off the rock. We still don't see the dragon yet because he goes under this waterfall in like a grotto, you know, and then he's coming. Sir Gilbert's like, dude, get in there and get that thing. Right. Like, let's see you. Let's see you slay another dragon. And the dragon spits out a corpse out from inside the grotto. And it's Sean Connery. You hear calling out saying this was the last dragon slayer that came after me and just spits it out there. And, you know, basically saying, you know, F with me and find out, you know, yeah, in dragonese. As he's sitting there writing, police on the scene, you know what I mean? That's right. This is it. <laughs> the police were on the scene. <laughs> Dost thou know what I mean? <laughs> he's just scribbling it on his papyrus over there. <laughs> if ye posed a problem, ye know I'll solve it. That's right. <laughs> 
dude, imagine somebody freestyling while you're trying to fight a dragon, and the whole time he's trying to fight, he's like trying to come up with lyrics. Right. I'm like, this has got to be the coolest thing. You, nowadays, if you had the, the equivalent now would be you're fighting a dragon, there'd be just a dude just freestyling next to you while you're trying to do it. It'd be awesome. Awesome. Respect to the original freestylers, the Brother Gilberts of the world. Uh, basically there's some smack talk back and forth between Bowen and the dragon. He goes in there and he's like, what do you do after you kill me? Now you won't have anything else, you know, left to make any money with a job. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, it's not the profit. It's the pleasure. And it's like his pirate accents coming out a little bit there and, and they end up, you know, it's going to be a throwdown, but the dragon flies out of the ground. It's the first time we finally see the thing. But Dana was like, are we never going to see this dragon? Cause they didn't, couldn't do it yet or whatever. So she hadn't seen it previously. No, she had never seen it either. So, dragon Private flies school. out. And it this was is a pretty first. sweet reveal. You thought that this was a... We don't want to talk about how the dragon looked right now. No. I think it was okay. amazing. <laughs> you thought it looked amazing? It was a great looking dragon. I couldn't draw a dragon that good. Oh, that doesn't mean it's good because you can't good. do it. It's better than I could do. <laughs> like I appreciate it. I can't it. fix a car myself, but if I bring it to somebody that's supposed to be able to fix a car and they do a crappy job, I'd be like, well, it's better than I could do. Then you brought or, it to a dealership. <laughs> I'm like, you know... So is that why you don't let me work on your car anymore? <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying... It's, it's got to be done right, not just better than what I can do. Because anybody could do better than I what I could do. Somebody could beat it with a stick and do more than I could do <laughs> with the thing. You know, here's your problem right here. I knocked the oil pan off with the stick, and now it doesn't leak anymore because it's just gone. Right. There you go. No problem oil, no solved. leak. No oil, no right. leak. Can't, uh, can't, can't burn have... oil if you don't put it in. That's what I'm saying, man. Uh, all right. So he fl- dragon flies out of there and Bowen chases him with it. And he's got a dragon fishing reel in like his pack behind him. Yeah. And so he throws this tether that basically grabs onto his leg mid flight. And he ends up getting dragged through like two different forests. <laughs> okay. He leaves the horse behind. He's hanging on this rope like like the guy at the end of Delta Force 2. Yep. Yeah. And he's just getting swung through the trees. And he nails a couple of trees. And he's fine. It's yeah. hilarious, though. <laughs> I think it was totally like, shouldn't fine. he be concussed? I mean, or, or it's oh, broken this was before spine concussion or protocol. Oh, he's right. fine. Oh, okay, he's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, get back in the game. Yeah. You're fine. Gotcha. Concussions weren't invented yet. Now you yeah. gotta walk it off. Back then, you run he's, your bell, you just yeah, rub you, some dirt on it and get back in just there. Just keep flying through forests. That's, <laughs> that's it, exactly. Because they, they need him out there. There's nobody else that could defeat a dragon. Right. right. That was actually, the backup in? Yeah, that was the medical yeah, you care system. That's right. When you got hurt, they drug you through a forest with a dragon. Exactly. Eventually, he's able to take the saddle that it's connected to, uh, put it between two trees as he's falling off, and this brings the dragon down. It traps the dragon. Yes. So now they're both on the ground. Gilbert is chasing them down on his donkey, and this donkey has got to be like, what the hell are you doing? Because like, there's a freaking dragon right here. Right. All I could think about was this poor donkey and get that donkey out of there before the dragon eats him. Was anybody else worried about the donkey? Well, Dude. I thought they were going to make <laughs> little baby donkey dragons. Oh, because a donkey and the dragon. That's right. what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. that's what I was afraid. I was like, we don't need this in this like, movie. Yeah. All right. My daughter is right here. <laughs> I was I was going to say donkeys or uh, uh, dragons don't eat ass. That's, that's, <laughs> that is unwanted <laughs> physical contact. <laughs> All right. So they're starting to fight now. They're in this little clearing, and uh, they're fighting and arguing, and the dragon says, I am the last one. Like, this is what he says. This is It's just me, right? I am the law. And... <laughs> Not too far off from that. And here's what I don't understand. And this happens many times throughout the movie. No one recognizes anybody. Right. Right. No one knows who anyone is. Wouldn't he recognize this dragon's voice? That I was mean, my you, immediate I would think first so. thought. I'm like, yeah. you heard this dragon speak. Like, have Probably you the only hit? dragon you've heard speak. Probably. In a world they of only had constant- money for one dragon in the movie. So there's only one talking dragon in a movie. Right. How do you not remember what he sounds like? I mean, I guess it's been 12 years, but still. Well, to that, maybe the fact that we never heard any of the other dragons talk, maybe they all sound like that. Oh, all they all sound like Sean Connery? Connery. Yeah. I, see, I heard him. We don't know. About that. I heard him know. and knew it was Sean Connery right away. I mean, how did he not know it was Sean Connery? <laughs> right. That's, yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I, the big thing is, in a movie full of people with constantly changing accents, yeah. <laughs> you have no idea what they might have or should have that's, sounded. That's and you're maybe like, point. everybody you know sounds different every day. It's like, well, it doesn't matter what they sound like. That doesn't that's mean why later on, Dina Meyer doesn't recognize Dennis Quaid because he doesn't sound the yeah, same. Anymore. Right. Because he was doing an accent before. Right. Yeah. All right. Now it's starting to make more sense. Okay. She, and she could have been like, weren't you like a pirate before? <laughs> Weren't I you knew a pirate to, once. Weren't you burning down my village? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't me. That I, was, was I, was, I was with some other guys. Somebody else. That was one of them other pirates. That was a Norwegian. <laughs> 
Where are they too? That's the other thing I don't know. We it's never established where exactly Dra- they Dragon are. Dragon Dragon Land, Land USA. Yeah, Dragononia. Dragontopia. Uh, all right, so the dragon goes to chomp down on him. He sticks the sword in the top of the palate of his mouth, and they end up in a bit of a stalemate here. Get your butt off of my tongue. Dude, it's the weirdest scene to me in the entire movie. It was way too he's, long of a scene. It was too I was long. bored with he's it. He's sitting in his mouth. He's got, he's like, if I thrust this sword up, then it goes into your brain. Well, if you do that, I'll bite down and eat you. And then they're just stuck like that. And he's riding this dude's tongue like a drunk girl on a mechanical bull yep. in Austin, Texas somewhere. And it was just weird because he's just gyrating like this the whole time. It was it was just, it, to me, it was a weird scene. He didn't even have to put a quarter in. No, he didn't have to do anything. He's just riding this. The dude, there's like body pieces from another night stuck in yeah. his teeth. Thank you. That's been his... stuck in there for weeks. That's right. It was weird, dude. It's a lot of shaking and gyrating, and it was just, it was weird. And they went apparently all into the night. I can st- I can stay awake for three days. I, I can, can stay, stay awake yeah. for three weeks. Right. Finally, mercifully for the audience, he spits him out and then goes like he puts his Not paw before on. Fleming in his face. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My throat is so dry. <laughs> <laughs> right in his face. Right in his face. <laughs> I still at this point can't decide if I like the movie or not. It's okay. You know, at this point in the yeah, film. I got you. So you hadn't seen it earlier either? No, I'd never seen this before. And, oh wow. And like I wanna I wanna be generous. It was 1996 with the CGI and it was the first fully CGI, you know, character. But it's bad. The dragon looks terrible. It may look terrible, but it looked better than the video games of the time, or at least yeah. as good. It wasn't, like I said, you, you got to look back at where CGI was, what we had from like previous special effects, so to speak. This was more complex for sure. It may not have been as flashy and ridiculous as yeah. explosions, but it was much more complex. I thought that too. The facial position, uh, positionings and everything as he mm-hmm. talked and everything is like they. They got it. They got it right. You I understand what, you know, the mouth matches what he's saying. Yes, like that's that. of the the mouth anime. That was all fine. Just the look of the dragon itself. At first I was like, well, it's the time. But this was three years after Jurassic Park. Right. And Jurassic Park yeah. still holds up and looks amazing. Sure. Yeah, but those are dinosaurs. Dinosaurs and dragons look completely different. Yeah, dinosaurs different. were They're real. basically <laughs> dinosaurs with wings. Yeah, but those were real. Those weren't real dinosaurs. I know it looks like th- those this is how real good dinosaurs. it looked that way, but those were special effects, Clinton. Oh. Those Do you not know the history dinosaurs. about the fly and the amber? <laughs> did, I know. Did you not? See, it's a mosquito. It was um, not a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> the fly was Jeff Goldblum. The mosquito was Oh, the right. right. I get yeah. those mixed up. No, it's fine. <laughs> It was not a documentary. That was, I know it looks like they really cloned dinosaurs for the movie. I thought that was a real place. <laughs> like, we could go. We just have never had enough money to get dinosaurs. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because we get it's 10000 per person. Whatever playground, we charge, they'll pay. Playground it, right? for the rich. Isn't it one of the islands of Hawaii? Something like that. Yeah. Dragon says, all right, how about a truce? You know, spits him out, jumps down. He says, I'm not going to kill you. Consider the alternative. You know, we can either fight this out or, you know, consider yeah. the alternative. And he gets I up. kill you. They send another dragon slayer. Right. You kill me. There's nothing left and you're, you're out, out of a job. job. Right. So how about we scam people instead? Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. And so it was the – so the whole movie is treated like – Dennis Quaid is the shyster for conning people, but it's the dragon's idea. <laughs> yeah. Because right. he's the one like, you want to hear about the alternative? And Dennis Quaid stands up and goes, all right, what's the alternative? Cut to them bilking a village for money. I've right. got this idea. We send people emails to reach them about their car's extended warranty. That's right. That was the plan one. That didn't work because email hadn't been invented yeah. yet. Yeah, right. And they were like, we got to wait for we th- something to do in know, the meantime. We need a thousand years until email. This was seven, 972 AD or whatever the year was. <laughs> So it was like, you know, a thousand years before the 70s. And like, we got to do, sorry, what's plan B? We'll just con everybody and steal their money, even though they're all poor peasants anyway. These are the good guys in the movie. Yeah. Conning peasants out of money. So maybe he was a Nigerian prince? Wasn't wasn't the first con, though, The uh, he went back to the guy that stiffed him on the his dragon kill before yeah so jason isaacs is the first one but yeah. then they go to after two that, other i didn't villages. have a problem with that one but after that's like eh. yeah come on you're supposed to be the good guy here dragon comes in and it's just to dive bombing these huts <laughs> like somebody's great grandfather built that and they're like poor family lives in it and he's just blasting these huts out of the sky with the, with these with fire bolts okay and they end up burning down half this village, and then they bilk Jason Isaacs out of some money. Like, hey, I'll kill this dragon for you. You know, I'm a dragon slayer. And uh, you're going to pay me up front. Double. They end up 
faking an arrow shot through one of these like uh, trebuchets, you know, that oh, uh, like a ballista or something like a ballista, that. Yeah. not a trebuchet. Yeah. A trebuchet is a catapult uh, ballista with these, one of these giant arrows, kind of like smog in the Hobbit. Dude, yeah. it's awesome. Except he catches the arrow in the air. The dragon does, <laughs> sticks it between his arm. He like, and you side. can see it. I mean, again, in the cheesy CGI, yes. he grabs yeah. the arrow. You can clearly see that he grabbed yes. the arrow and then like tucked it under his arm. Like, Oh, Right, and all of these idiot peasants are like, oh, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, he's down. Oh, that's jolly good that's shot, good. sir. <laughs> Jason Isaacs is the only one kind of going, like, staring at it like, uh, what? Falls into the lake and swims away. Swims away. I was like, it's locked in a sponsor. And Kelly's like, well, the <laughs> accent makes sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. As they ride away, they talk about uh, I, what I did need. I needed one background character just to say something. Right. Like, Man, there's a bunch of bull. <laughs> like, I just needed one person. That guy right. took out a 350. That's right. That guy, yeah, he stabbed himself right before he falls into right, the water. Yeah, Something. Right. But no one notices. They ride away, and they have, like, some character-building moments where they talk about how he doesn't follow the code anymore, and he's like, I no longer try to change the world. I just get by in it. And he's, you know, they're trying to build the relationship between him and the dragon about how he's left the old code behind, basically, the night. Now we cut to the dining hall at Einan's Palace, where Brock, Brock, uh, he's like playing mercy or thumb wrestling peasants and like snapping their wrists for fun. It's like best Tuesday night ever. It's like this is the <laughs> yeah. night they bring the peasants in to thumb wrestle Brock. It, is that what they looked like they were so doing? They were doing, yeah. They just had, we had one peasant of. in this hand, one peasant yep. in this hand, and he's just snapping wrists and doing some kind of feat of strength or something. And they're all like drinking and laughing like it's the greatest thing ever. Ha <laughs> ha, bring two more peasants in. Yeah. I love watching this. This is hilarious. And the whole time the mom's just sitting there like, what the fuck? <laughs> I did this. This is me. I did this. Right. Einan sees Kara. Now, Kara, we've been calling her Dina Meyer, but Dina Meyer's character's name is Kara. And Einan sees Kara sneak in a window, you know, through the reflection in his mug while he's pouring more beer or whatever. And she's there to assassinate him. But because he saw her coming, he's able to stop the assassination and, uh, you know, pins her to the table, basically. And Can you see gingers and mirrors? I didn't think you could. I didn't think you could either. So we'll call that a, a mistake. I went, well... Certainly not a trope, know. but can you? I mean, she's not a vampire, but she has no soul. Oh. Is that what we're looking at in a mirror? Is our soul? I don't know. Is that what the mirror is? Maybe. I mean, I just thought it was light refracting back at me. The same thing that's looking at it. Right. I'm looking at my soul when I look in the mirror. Could be. Yeah. Soul looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in, and she says, I actually like this exchange. She's pinned to the table here, and, and she says, in your kingdom, Einan, there are fates worse than death. And he leans in a little closer and goes, I'll think one up for you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fate he thinks up for her that's supposed to be a fate worse than death is to marry him. <laughs> you imagine being Nailed married it. to that? Talk about a cell phone, haircut. dude. Like, Man. Yeah, right. Hey, fate worse than death. I got to look at that every day when <laughs> I wake up. to me, dude. He goes down into the dungeon and uh, releases her into the bedroom, basically, and wants to get with her. Yeah, the dungeon bedroom thing was a little weird. Because she was in the dungeon, and then all of a sudden she's in the bedroom. Yeah, well, he's into like the attached. BDSM yeah. stuff, so... The dungeon is attached to the bedroom. Mm. Through, a sliding through a sliding bone panel <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> exactly. At least he didn't have one of those gas chambers, like in uh, American... Delta Force? Or Delta Force Delta 2, Delta Force right. 2. That's what I'm saying, dude. Those bad bad guys like to party in weird ways. They Thursday do. night in, in Columbia was gas chamber night. They'd right. all get the yep. guys together. Tuesday was thumb, thumb wrestling wrist breaking time. Tuesday nights, they do the thumb wrestling here in nine. Also the burning of villages. And the burning, burning of the villages. villages. That's right. So that's how they got down. There wasn't a lot of ways to entertain themselves back then, Mel. Yeah, that's okay. true. They, you can mess with some peasants. What else are you going to do? Bird watching? I mean, what is there to do? There's, there's only so many straw huts you can burn. That's right. Eventually you run out of them. Right. Bring some in here. And Bring we'll them in. Let's break the wrist. new games. Houses. Yeah. You know. What would you do if you, you were a lord back then? I definitely think I could have come up with something better than I murdered your dad. Marry me. That's, uh, <laughs> I could have done better. As far as game goes, that's not really a great approach yeah. for girls. That just doesn't work very often. I mean, jousting comes to mind. Yeah, but even that's like they have those tournaments like once every few months or something. And yeah, I, mean, I, guess. I always think when I watch these movies how bored I would be all the time. Like, what do they do? They sit around and talk to each other? Play on an NES? They didn't have NESs back they, then. They built oh, I'm castles. sure they did. They built castles. That's what they passed. It takes 12 oh, years. 
<laughs> These were Atari days, right? True. Yep, they did. They had the the uh, Coleco, 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 Coleco Vision. Coleco. Coleco. Coleco Vision. Right. This is ninety six. Yep. They definitely had NES. It's nine seventy two. So, 972 was the Coleco era. Yeah, it was the Coleco era in the <laughs> 70s. So is that pre-Pong? No, Pong was like the first one that came out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, she stabs him, which also makes the dragon fall from the sky, like wherever they're at. And he still wants to get with her. He's like, I'll give you everything. Come on, two gingers together. We would rule the entire dang universe, man. I, I see this. She stabs him and the dragon falls. And I'm thinking like the Corsican brothers. <laughs> What's it, Cheech and Chong? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. movie where yeah. You know, that one hurts the other. Yes, so they're stabbing, fighting each other by stabbing themselves and so. Yeah, dude, stuff. I haven't seen that in so long. I don't remember that. Oh, I thought you were looking. Like you no, were no, say no. Something. Sorry. Uh, so, it bef- but the queen comes in and breaks her out of prison, basically out of the bedroom before anything can actually happen. And so she sneaks Dina Meyer's character out of there and she takes off. And it says something I can't uh, allow you to. Uh, what follow the same fate as I did or yeah. something like right. that. Yeah. So like I'm he's like, like yep. did the father kill her or the, the Ooh, her yeah. husband kill her father? This Previous is where he. This like, is where hey. the king learned the moves hey. from the dad. Right? He's like, yeah. hey dad, you know, he back when he was nine. How did you get how do mom? I, how do I get girls? Ah, interesting story. This is how it worked for me. <laughs> yeah. So you just find a girl you think is really hot, kill her dad, pester her dad for years, <laughs> right? And then murder him in front of her. It's the yes. long game. You got to play the long game. Wait till she tries to assassinate. Don't him. just kill him right away because that won't work. Now the trick <laughs> is to have the dungeon get... attached to the bedroom. This is the key <laughs> with a sliding stone right. panel. And then you're in like Flint. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Unless the mom comes and lets your bride to be out. If that happens, then you just got to find another peasant. Yeah, yeah. Do what you got to do. Uh, all right. Meanwhile, Dragon and Bowen have been broing out, bonding for a little while, and this is where Bowen decides to name him Draco, which is just Dragon in, in another language. In another language. Which, Don't call me Dragon. That's right. So you just decided to call me Dragon in another language. Cool. All I right. Like that's it. fine. Uh, Kara goes home and tries to rally the peasants for another revolt, and I'm like, is this the only village under Ainan? Is this it? Because there's only ever this one village of peasants. That are revolting. It probably is because he sucks, right? Yeah, he's got a tiny little castle. Right. The only other, they, well, they show Jason Isaac's little village, which was like three huts big, and then there's the pig village later. But I don't know if they're under Einan because this is the only peasants that ever want to <laughs> rebel or do anything. Yeah. Well, the so, others declared independence because he sucks so bad. Well, think yeah. about the other kings in the area. Like we can get that castle built in two years, right. twelve. <laughs> twelve. <laughs> we have six peasant villages. What's Come on. up? <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, Bowen, as she's trying to rally the village, Bowen also shows up to run his con on the village, and Kara kind of sees right through it, right? But, you know, the town is convinced to offer up her, her up as a sacrifice by right. Dennis Quaid. Yeah. He's like, oh, we should, you know, sometimes they're, you know, if you don't want to pay, they are, you know. Maybe one of your fine daughters as right. a uh, maiden sacrifice. They are partial to maiden sacrifices, you know, and they've tied, so they tie her to a pole. She grew up there. Okay, she's not a stranger. He's, she's, yeah, she's getting tied up. She's like, I know your dad. Her dad was kind of a troublemaker, though. I guess to a certain extent. These yeah. people. This is the pig village one. No, this is oh, this sorry. is still Kara's village. We're gonna get to oh, the pig please. village in a second. Uh, anyway, the <laughs> dragon doesn't want to actually eat her, so he just swoops in and picks up Kara on the pole and everything, and rides off with her, and just like chills by a waterfall with yeah, her. He takes yes. her to the waterfall and starts risen her up. Right. Yeah. This is he like is. the dragon version of like dripping some water in her mouth while she's waking up in the morning. Like, you know cool what I mean? It's the same thing. <laughs> like I know it's I know the dragon is Sean Connery, but he's pulling like his Sean Connery James Bond gang yeah. game right. on this girl. And she, everybody everybody thinks that they can get them away from the pole. Yeah. You know, like they can just talk to him and and you know <laughs> In, in this case, it does work. And oh, Sean Connery oh. is definitely into her because even when Bowen shows up at the little grotto thing, he's like, the dragon's like, oh, sorry, I was distracted. Like, she by really this, likes me. By this girl, she likes me. <laughs> She's being nice to you for tips. Right. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is when Einan rides up to the grotto of the waterfall, laughing his head off. He's got his boys with him. And he immediately recognizes Bowen. Dragon rolls out like he's yeah. he's coming. He's coming and takes off. Yeah, yeah right. hides behind the waterfall. Correct in the little grotto from before. So here now, Einan is up with his boys, laughing, and uh, that can't be my old teacher, Bowen. You know, and they have this uh, standoff in the river. I thought this sword fight was actually really well choreographed and well yeah. right. 
that the, yes. f- the fight that the two of them have here, which also establishes that he's not one to be smacked around anymore. He's not, he's not the little kid anymore. Spot he's actually, but you know, pretty good. So I thought it was well court and really, and they are like going back and forth in the river, and he ends up stabbing Dennis Quaid and getting the better of him here. Yeah, which at this point, Dennis Quaid hasn't met anybody in the movie he can't beat. He's been kind of shown to be this great warrior. Right. Yep. So it's kind of a moment where we're like, oh, hold on a second here. Einan's not somebody to be trifled with. Right. The problem with this scene is as good as the sword fighting is, the acting is terrible. It's terrible. It's like, I am yelling at you, and then I also will yell back at you, and we are acting because we are yelling. I know you. You knew the old code. I said the words because I knew you wanted me to, but I vomited them up. No, you did it. And it was just yeah, terrible. Nothing landed. No. None of it landed between those two. The fight was great. The acting in the scene was terrible. I believe the dragon. In the when he was hiding in the grotto, right? Yeah, it's like I That's gotta get away part. from this yelling. That's the best part of the scene. <laughs> At this point, Ian's gonna about to throw a knife and finish off Dennis Quaid, and this is when the dragon does come out and basically lifts up his scales to and shows him shows yeah. the heart, the half heart, or whatever. And uh, Einan freaks out because he sees the dragon that had given him the heart from before, and they all take off. And this is who basically Draco saves Bowen's life at this point. The three of them are now leaving on their own, and again, no one recognizes anybody. So here we have Carr going, you know, I knew a knight once who saved a man from being blinded. Well, he, he died a long time ago. I'm like, you, you idiots. Every, how do you, like, it's the same I, dude. It's right, so I, obviously the same dude. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I didn't get that at all because it's. You grew up in a village. You know the same twelve people. It, yeah, okay. there's like the same people. You, there's the same night. It would be right. different too if maybe they were always wearing like full on armor and face. Like, nope, that's his head. Nope, that's him. the guy. Same haircut. Yeah, never really had armor on at all yeah. in the movie. No, but this didn't is where age he, like the other dude. She's basically like saying age, like if you if you join up, you know, you're a knight and you can help us. We can turn the tide this time. And he goes, I'm not helping you. I'm not getting involved in this rebellion. That's not even happening yet at this point. The only person rebelling is her. She couldn't even get her own village to revolt right. at this point. So it's just her. So this is now Clint, where they roll up on yep. a pig farming village and yep. they're collecting money for the next con. Now they're going to con these pig farmers. With the sweetest pig purse of all time. Right. I mean, this is the craziest thing. They go in there, and they're going to – they got all the pigs running around. They get the agreements. Dragon comes in, flies in. He does the whole thing where he grabs the blista out of the sky. Yeah. And freaking tucks it under his wing and falls, and the mud is literally like – Eight inches deep. Yeah, they, the river. Like, yeah. like the, they, this river is dry. <laughs> they just got done like, irrigating sink, the sink. Sink. It's like, like can't. It can't. It doesn't get any deeper. That's right. <laughs> These people immediately, and I understand yeah. this point. They're like, all right, dragons in the river, and they're like, meat, 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 and they go yeah. after it, and they're like, oh, shit, I gotta go. But yeah. why? Pig, they're pig farmers. Yes. Right. They got I all the meat in the world. I understand this at this point because that's not their meat. That's not their fish. Right. That is the king's meat and the king's fish. They still only get to eat what they get to eat. Right. That's the king's meat and fish. So they don't get to eat those. So I understand them wanting to eat the dragon. Yeah. I get that to an extent. Right. Dragon flies away and they turn and they look at the people and it's like, oh, f- yeah, we're going to eat these people. Right. So they turn, well, they look at Bowen, Kara, and Brother Gilbert I, is there, which we haven't said yet. Get the going from like, oh, uh, I guess there's people available. We might as well go eat them. Right. That part there is a little weird. Yeah, and they turn around and meat, they see meat. his brother Gilbert for some reason is in this village also. Right? He's like, yeah. oh, oh Bowen, he showed this up. This is where yeah. we like reunite with brother Gilbert. Because she's like, up. he's not a right. Because Kara's like trying to blow him out of the water. Yeah, he's, he's a not fake. a uh, dragon slayer. Right. He's never killed a dragon. They're, he's in cahoots with the dragon, and they all laugh at I him. I absolutely have seen him kill a dragon. Right. Yeah. And so Gilbert speaks on his behalf. So when they turn around and say meat, it's the three of them that they're yeah. going to try and eat. And that that part to me is just like how do you make that jump? That's just ridiculous. There's yeah. plenty of meat around. There was a there was a funny mistake that was made here that they ended up leaving in the movie and having to dub in a line to explain it, but it was a total accident. So as they're like, we got to go, we got to go and they ride the horse over and Dina Meyer jumps on the back of the horse and she's facing back back to back with Dennis Quaid. Right. Gilbert jumps in on the back and now is face to face with her. 
and accidentally just holds on directly onto her left breast. Yes. Full yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Wasn't supposed to. And you realize he realizes and like goes like this and puts his hand somewhere else. And they had to dub in a line of him going, oh, I'm sorry, madam, like as it as they right. rode away. But he straight up just jumps on, if you watch, and just cops a feel. And she's like, we're not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing one take of this, and that's it. 42 right. more takes. I'm going to get it right this yeah. time. But there was an accident on Peter's uh, part. But yeah, they left it in the movie, which is actually kind of hilarious. Is that what you call a happy little accident? Uh, ah. Depends on who you ask, I'm assuming. Huh? Draco scoops them up and flies them away. That's how they're able to get out of the situation. The dragon just carries them and the horse yeah. out of there and brings them to Avalon to try and get through to Bowen. This is where the Knights of the Round Table and Arthur are all kept. And you're like, why on earth would we come here? No reason. Like, there's, it just seems like such a weird sojourn in this movie. I know, like, they're trying to make this whole thing where he's left the code behind and he no longer follows the old code. And so we'll bring him to the resting place of Arthur and his knights, and then he'll be rejuvenated by the code and all this. But he really he is like Camelot. He might have been uh, yeah. more convinced by a musical but, number. You yeah. know, let's not go there. It's a silly it's, place. It's a silly place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he also admits that this is where he admits that he's the one who saved Einan. And I just wanted Dennis to be like, yeah, I know. Everybody knows. Right. It was you. We all knew. We knew. The audience knows. I know. Everybody knows. But no, we're just like, it was you. You did it. But he still won't help them. The dragon's trying to convince him to help them, you know, take out Einan. And he won't. So they literally fly away and leave him there by himself. And then the, even the ghosts are like, what the frick are we supposed to do with this? Don't leave this guy here. Yeah. And so they just start reciting the old code, like the ghosts of Arthur and his knights. Yeah, they're popping out the columns and everything. They're like, else. "Stop being an a hole! Like, a, you know, go back with your friends, please." Remember the c- code. Remember the code. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and the next, uh, the next, the next moment encapsulates, I think, my problem with the whole film. Not that it's necessarily even a bad film. This Here is, we go. This is why I don't think it works. The next moment after he's now reciting the old code back to the ghosts in Avalon, it cuts back to the village where she's again trying to convince the villagers to rebel and all that. And this is where we have this big moment. And the score is really working hard to tell you this is a big triumphant moment. Yep. Bowen rides in and he says, I'm going to start a fight with Einan. Like, this is supposed to be the big, the, we've been trying the whole movie to convince him to do this. The big moment. And he says, I'm starting a fight. I'm joining the cause. And the score is going crazy. And it just doesn't land. Right. No, I felt kind of fell flat. Like, you know? This build up to this. And it, I don't know that it was even that triumphant of an entry. Like, That's all of a sudden saying. he had this revelation. Like, oh, yeah, I'm a knight. We have to go take care of this right. idiot kid. It, he it, rides in like, all right, guys, I'm here. Let's start this rebellion. Oh. That's just the thing. Like, the sum of the parts isn't great. The parts are cool, right? Cool actors. Yeah. Not even the dragons. Could, but it just, the story fails to connect. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, to me. And so here's this big moment that I'm just going, okay. Which is definitely not the reaction you could tell they wanted based on the way they wrote the score for this portion of the movie, right? They, right. Like, it was the most triumphant moment of the whole film. But... Yeah, well, he does come back and he's like, "All right, let's let's do it." He starts to train all the peasants on how to fight, and one of the weirdest lines, you know, he's Dina Meyer is like carving up a log with a. Will axe. this cleave a man's skull? And he goes like a pudding, right? A what? Like a pudding, like, like a, yeah. a pudding. like a put. Yeah. He throws it into a pumpkin, right? And goes like a pudding. Well, it's different here. You cleave a pudding? Our pudding is different than English pudding. True. Like, it'll be more like a pot pie where you break the shell off into it or whatever. You know. Kind okay. Of so thing. then say so like a like, pot pie. They didn't have those there. They, and That's they not what they call them. They call I'm supposed to know what pudding was in 972? So they need to write every damn movie about you? It's not just 972. It's England. In in Pudding in England isn't pudding? No. Yes. And you would know this if you eat your meat. Wait, 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 wait. Meat is pudding? Oh, my God, James. No, explain you this to me. You uncultured swine. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm going I, to I'm need you to like, get more well-traveled. Listen, uh, what were the... What were the I was, all I was thinking of was like a pack of snack packs. No, it is not there. snack pack. And, and like, of no. all the things you would say, this would cleave a man's skull like pudding. Pudding is not necessary, not a dessert. <laughs> no. You know? So what is it then? 
Well, it's like uh, the, the meat is all together in there. It's got the pot pie lid on top, and okay. you crush it in. You crush You're, it in. Crush that top part in and mix it in. It's like a pot pie to us. That's a pudding. So pop. Okay, I so know I'm not exactly correct here, guys. So you can flame me away if you want. But all like, of our okay, listeners, okay, well, all of get. our listeners in the UK, which we have a lot. Uh, are, yeah. are cringing right now. Right, well, because I'm doing it off. wrong. Because you're doing it wrong. They're cringing at me because I don't know what the hell it all. is. And my, and you're my it ex- explanation of it, or explanation of it is not very well. Good. Okay. But so yes. Someone the, from, the, the, someone from the UK, please write us that this show is trash. Send <laughs> This is why we are the send worst Send James podcast. a pudding. Okay. Send, send us this show is trash, please, and tell us what the hell a pudding you, is. You know they're going to send some in like pudding. What the hell are you guys talking about? We eat the same crap that Bill Cosby was pushing. That's what, <laughs> that's what I thought of. Uh, Jello pudding <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about the other thing he was pushing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Maybe. So Brother Gilbert, also Drink we additives. find out, is a natural marksman, right? He can yeah. fire a bow and arrow like nobody's busy. He's like, Between Brother Gilbert, you're a natural. You kill a cyborg and he does a good nut shot. Right there. Yeah. Brock, <laughs> Brian Thompson, this actually was pretty funny to me. Brian Thompson rides over the hill, probably to find his next Tuesday night thumb wrestling opponent, sees them all practicing together, and is like, oh, crap, and just rides back immediately going, I need more dudes. He pulls a Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> pays the <laughs> road tax on his way back. I need more men. And he's like, oh, we don't need men. These are peasants. You know, you're supposed to be tough. Let's go take these people out. No problem. Mom comes out. Okay, into this little military meeting. And she goes, hey, honey, to King Island, I got you a present. Mom, I'm, I'm doing King stuff. That's literally how he was acting. Yeah. It. She pulls him out to the side. He literally walks out with his shoulders slumped in the next room like a kid would be like, what? What do you want to show me? And she's like, five of the finest. And he goes, the finest what? <laughs> and she goes, dragon slayers you idiot like look at them they've got dragon pieces right all over them five of the, f- the dude look is ridiculous the dude is perpetually nine years old yeah yeah okay yes and the dragon slayers also looked ridiculous it's like if i had to put costumes on people to make them look like dragon slayers that's what i would have come up with right when they showed up i'm <laughs> like like is she for real like these are these is this supposed to be a joke or is are these like, <laughs> like for real dragon slayers or no. what the hell is no, going on? No, if you want to see what a real dragon slayer, you need a mind like uh, Goratowski to make you a dragon slayer. That's costume, right, yes, you right. Do. These guys had a mind like mine. You, you, need, <laughs> yeah. you need a Frago it's rock joke. Different. You ask Clint if you need a dragon costume. Ask Joe. <laughs> Everybody got that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the final battle, guys. Uh, we get one village, one village full of peasants versus Ainan's tiny army. Yeah, well, he didn't have any more friends. <laughs> he had a yeah. Tiny, ar- there's like 35 guys. Yeah, well, the rest of the villages declared. There was only 100, was uh, only 100 people so. in the village. Right. So, like, you have to take the the ten percent of the best and turn them into your army. That's only ten dudes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, the whole thing. It's like it's, it's clear they didn't have enough budget to have these massive amount of extras or whatever. Right. But when their army ran, like, there was a decent amount of peasants they got for the shot, and a lot you fill the frame in the camera to make make it look like there's a ton of people. But there's about thirty five dudes in the bad guys' whole squad. Yeah. Did they not pay them so they were method actors? And I'm like, how did uh, how did they not overthrow this guy? Immediately, if all he's got is 35 guys. Yeah. Yeah. They were afraid of his hair, that he just wasn't right. <laughs> that's that's probably what it was. <laughs> like, you see that? Yeah, I don't want to get up close and look at that. No, we're going to just... <laughs> this guy's crazy. It starts off, Draco flies over and firebombs the, the, the ramparts, right, where yeah. the archers yeah. are. And immediately, the first dragon slayer ends up shooting himself with an arrow and dies immediately. Yes. yes. And I'm like, five finest in the world... This guy killed himself. Cell phone oh. And I just wanted him to look at his mother and he'd just be like, well, he was the fifth best out of the, yeah. out of the five, obviously. I mean, they're not all very good, but they are the five <laughs> best. Right. Well, that was clearly the fifth best out of them. It's though. a budding industry. Are, are <laughs> they the five best after Sir Dennis? Right. Because then the next guy throw like tr- uh, tries to throw the, the fires the three hooked yeah. spears at him, which he catches and yanks that guy off the thing. Yep. And he dies. He yanked the guy off? Yeah. Right off. Like yanked him right off. He just yanked him right off with the stick. Like yanked his stick, like grabbed onto it and just, and just yanked yes. him off. Yeah. And the guy went flying afterwards. All right. And I'm like, okay, that was that was got to be the fourth and fifth best then. I, like the, the top three dragon slayers yeah. have to be left, right? They ride out to meet the rabble who retreat into the forest. 
And then they start, once Einan's guys are in the forest, they start a fire behind them. Yeah, so they can't retreat back and Reinforce their line with more people than they thought they had. And now Einan's guys are trapped. It's like some Robin Hood and this Merry Men. Yeah, type they, they pulled up the angled stakes so that the the, the knights can't just ride through them. Which right. Is, you know, yep. that's great. So now the archers are protected behind a wall. But what was funny, they had these big long spears that they were holding. Yeah. What was funny is once the peasants then charged into the ranks of the bad guys, they're coming in with these long spears, and the knights on the horses start sword fighting and hitting the tops, the of, tops the of the spears <laughs> instead of just killing the guy that's standing down there holding them at the bottom. It was hilarious. Yeah. He's like, oh no, and they're all like looking a upwards stick. at these sticks. Well, I think they were probably better at medieval battle in medieval times. Yes. Yeah. These guys have forgotten a couple of things. We have to hit them at the top of the stick. We have to chop the stick down. And then once right. we get to the person, then we can kill yeah. them. Yeah. You have to, yeah. You have to get the stick. Right. And if one the of the knights level. had just killed the guy immediately, they'd be like, hey, 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 hold on a second. He killed this guy before chopping his stick down. <laughs> you like, can't do what's that. What's the point of the stick? You That's can't. the whole point. I got this whole stick. You got to start at the top. <laughs> Start at the top and then get the guy. You know, this entire battle was kind of disappointing because I did not have a giant turkey leg. No. <laughs> That's the only way. That <laughs> That's the only way to only make way that to enjoy a battle. you got to have that half for a, a dragon. Battle. Got it. Mel would just be sitting on a horse eating a giant chicken yeah. leg or turkey leg. Turkey, turkey leg, leg, yes. While all this is going on. He wouldn't be worried about the guys with the giant Chalice stick. of ale. Chalice of ale. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Brother Gilbert is up in a tree. You know, they got the snipers up there. And he hesitates at first, but then starts like sniping log traps, like Ewok style that come down yep. and take dudes out and shoots one. He's shooting dudes in their butts. Turn the other cheek. That's Turn right. Cheek. That they, was good. They mixed in a couple of good. That was a good like, joke. There was a few at the beginning. They were like, oh, that's the humor they're going to put in here. They yeah. got better. Yeah. You know, there are a few good lines, but yeah, yeah it's the same way. I'm like, it just doesn't fit. You got Kara dual wielding axes, and Dina Meyer is like a pudding. Hundred percent believable. Dual, you know, sometimes they cast these people. Yeah, and you're like, I don't believe this person killing well, soldiers or dual wielding axes. She or anything. was legit. But she totally buys because she's got red hair. You know, she's nuts. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> unhinged. But uh. She is probably unhinged. Yes. Okay, I'll give you that. Just to the fact that she's a ginger. But besides that, I thought she sells the crap out of it, and I totally believed her. Just taking out knights yes. with her dual axes. Yep. 100%. Yes. She's fantastic in everything she does. I wish we would have gotten way more Dina Meyer in way more things than we actually ended up with. So shout out to Diz and uh, and Dina, and I just wish we'd gotten more. That's all I want to say. Drop us an email. Yeah, Dina <laughs> Meyer. You know, we all know you listen to Bad Movies Rule. Hit you're, us up. You're awesome. Email us. Definitely haven't been crushing on you since I saw Starship Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> At all. <laughs> all right. Um, Einan calls for a retreat. He sees what's going on. He's like, yells retreat. There's like six dudes left. Retreat. And Bowen yells at Gilbert up in the tree to stop him. That's Einan. Stop him. And there's this moment where he's like, thou shall not kill. Like he doesn't want to fire. Right. But he does let it go and he nails him directly in the heart. Yeah. And this is the moment we realize that Einan is immortal. Right. Because it's, it's direct hit, bro. Yeah. And he pulls the whole thing out of his dragon heart. Dragon falls out of the sky. Dragon, who ends up landing in the castle. Right. Yep. And he just pulls it out and goes, huh, how about that? How do you like them apples? But, but he saw him fall out of the sky. He realizes that and everything. He's like, the dragon slayers. Can't kill that. Right. Yeah, right. Kill the so dragon. he's got to run back. Like he Before the dragon through slayers the plane, kill them. back on the horse. Now, if he knew the dragon slayers were worthless, he wouldn't have been worried. Right, but they were the right. three yeah. best. He, he could have gotten slayers. off the horse and led his horse by foot into the thing, and he would have been fine. Probably because they were not going to kill that dragon. Right? No, those people were the most inept, worthless. <laughs> At this point, they're guarding the dragon because they chained the dragon down, and the mother comes out in the dark and just kills one in about one second. One of the right. dragon yeah. slayers just knifes it. No, we're done. It's not a mother slayer. That was probably the third. Definitely best. not a lady that killer. The just third. the third best dragon slayer. Third. That was the third best. It had to have been. So now we at least have the top two dragon slayers left. Top two. Well, top two and Sir Dennis, who's and probably Dennis. like on in a tier of his own. Well, he's in the uh, NFL. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dragon these, slayers. these are just the NCAA yeah. dragon Jeez, slayers. The, the XFL. These are your XFL dragon slayers. <sighs> Anyway, like I said, the queen sneaks into the courtyard, knives a dragon slayer, uh, and talks to the dragon and apologizes, right? Like, sorry, this is all my fault. I told you my son was going to be cool. He wasn't cool. Sorry about this whole thing. LOL. Uh, she, he wants her to kill him. Yeah, he said, you got to do it. You got to kill me. You know it's what you have to do. the only way to stop Einan. Einan finds them. Yeah. 
and says, this is so unmotherly of you, follows her into a dark room because this is a PG movie and can't kill her on screen. Right. Yeah. And kills her off screen after Get following screen. I, following her into yeah. a, I saved a creature who didn't deserve to be saved. Yeah. How unmotherly of you. How unmotherly of you. Let's see, there's some decent dialogue yeah. in like, the movie. Like I said, this this scene hits well. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. The queen is now dead, and Kara and Bowen sneak into the bedroom via that secret passage. And Ainan yeah. is laying in bed waiting for them. Okay. And he's like, Well, this is the end of the movie, so it's time for us to have our sword fight. And this is the big fight between him and yeah. Bowen. Which is a good fight. They end up down the secret passage, fighting all the way up the tower, up the stairs, on top of the tower. I thought the fight, again, wh- whoever their fight choreography was, my problem with this movie had nothing to do with the fight choreography. No, right. There were some good sequels. I thought the, good, the, the, the sword fight between them was fantastic and well done. J- down in the catacombs, Jason Isaac tries to kill Kara in the basement, but sneaking up, but ends up dying like a little puss anyway. Right. It's like the perfect death for that guy because yeah. one of the other peasants comes up behind him and stabs him. Yep. And he just looks like, I can't believe somebody killed me and slides down the wall. Uh, then we get Brock versus Dina. Brock versus Kara. This is I did not expect. I thought Brock and Bowen were going to ultimately right. fight yeah. and face off because at the beginning they established they didn't really like each other. Right. But it's Dina Meyer's character that fights Brock. And I was really disappointed in this fight because it lasts about two seconds. Right. He ends up jobbing to her after like one hit miss, comes in and he, she hits him in the gut with an axe and he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Brock, they built up as like this big, tough, you know, right hand man to the king. And he goes down in two seconds to to Dina so Myers. It would have been a well, good he, opportunity for like that secondary fight that's yeah. going on during the sequence. And yeah, I mean, it was two swings and yeah, I, a I, battle axe to the gut, and that was it. I buy that she could have killed him. I just don't buy she could have killed him that easily. Right. I'm just wondering if you know that just plays to the he would have been the type that would have completely written off the possibility of being killed by a girl right. and not taken it seriously on his that, end that's of the That's the combat. only way you can sell it, right? Yeah. Because I think this would have been a great opportunity to cut back and forth between two huge fights. Yeah, absolutely. Um, make it more intense. Make it a little more bloody. Some lightsabers. Some, You know, if you need to. I mean, we already got the Anakin Obi-Wan thing going yeah. on up the tower <laughs> right now. They're having their fight, you know, literally on the high ground. Yeah. Okay? So I'm saying, dude, it is basically episode three, this whole movie. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, on the tower, eventually Bowen kind of swings out of the way, and Einan falls all the way off the tower and through the dang floor at the bottom. You're like, right. oh, you yeah. know he did, right? Ish. <laughs> sort of. Go down, talk to the dragon Draco's and the girl. Like, Draco's like, he lives, you know, like, kill me. He's, He's coming. Yelling at Bowen, like almost saying in a very mean way, I'm going to kill you if you don't kill. Like, like yeah. strike, you know? Yeah. Intense. Intense scene. But Bowen... Literally throws the axe on the ground. Well, before he does that, he kills another dragon slayer with a basket. Again, these guys suck, dude. He's literally, he slides, he comes down the, the tower because he doesn't want to fall like Aina did yeah. on a rope. Oh, yeah. He's got and the there's a basket coming down, the counterway is coming down, and he fights with him for a second until the basket just kills the guy. Ah, wicker. Like a dragon slayer, but a wicker basket takes him out. Yeah. That was the second best dragon slayer. The second I'm best saying. one. Probably. Gone. Now gone. Yeah, gone. probably second best one. I don't know what happened. When we ever see what happened to the first best No, dragon. he probably ran after the other four. Yeah. Got he was like, oh, man, killed. I got baskets. I'm get out. I'm get I've got thing here. against baskets because of this show. Just because of this show? Yes. Why? What happened with a basket on this show? Basket case. Oh, yeah. Well, it may, yeah, maybe Brotato yeah. was in there. He was the counterweight. <laughs> <laughs> It was hard to find work. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of hard to find work. But now work there's only one before. dragon slayer around for the whole rest of, I mean, that dude's going to make bank. He is. Well, no. Well, there's, there's only no one dragon, dragon and well, they kill us. That's right. Yeah, no, that's it's out of work. Right. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. fine. Ultimately. I can't just say like this whole scene at the end with Sir Dennis and Draco was, I think, a little too overly drawn out. You think I'm so? I'm not going to kill you. I'm not, you're my friend, blah, blah. Like, Strike. Yeah. I, I thought it was little too drawn out. Yeah, they went back and forth about Yeah, they're trying to play to the moral, you know, he I, is... I get, uh, yeah, I get that, but it's... Right, but ultimately, Einan does come back up from the dead and makes a run at Bowen, who ultimately does strike Draco for the killing blow. He kills his friend to kill Einan. Didn't he kind of partially release him? Like, got rid of some of the chains? Yeah. Um, yeah, they so, took some so of the chains off. why didn't uh, Draco just pull the rest of his heart out? 
Then it's oh, over. He could have killed him. Yeah, why can't he? Can he not? Because uh, if he killed himself and this and that and the other, that probably yeah. would have been bad. He wouldn't have this gone up to the uh, to the constellation. To the I cannot self terminate. Yeah, right? just like T two man. Yeah. Well, I mean, can't self saving humanity. I guess. Oh, uh, he does kill Draco, and then Einan dies, and uh, Draco turns into Stardust and gets to go to Dragon Heaven. Yeah. And that's the end of the movie. Yeah. All right. We did it. Did thing. We talked about it. <laughs> that was a movie. That was our second dragon movie in three weeks. So we are we are we're dragon car- carving a niche here. Remember how we did like a bunch of post apocalyptic yeah. movies in a row? Oh, yeah. The computer gets on these kicks, man, and just now it's gonna be dragon movies for the next two months. Supercomputer needs a new algorithm. Which means rain of fire is coming probably at some point, I I'm imagine. In. All right, guys, I think there's a way that we could make this movie better. Definitely. I, are you sure? Sure. Yeah, Absolutely. We can. How can we make this better? We could take Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, I would have never thought of that. We could make him the voice of the dragon. We could. Ooh. Make him the face of the dragon, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's just eliminate the dragon entirely. And, well, just he's, Arnold. he's still a dragon, but he just has a square jaw yeah. instead of, you know... The regular uh, dragon and wings, face. and you'd have to make his wings yeah. like all muscly, though. But I think it'd be easy to do that. I mean, because I know everyone's like, "Oh, Sean Connery, Sean Connery, Sean Connery's pretty yeah. cool." I, he oh. is cool, but imagine if Arnold was the dragon, dude. Right, but I, I think that Sean Connery right? is already one of the best parts of it. So we're improving the best. There is so much low yeah. that we could improve what? that would elevate like what? higher. I don't, Einan. Einan? Let's make him Einan. He can be, we can actually have a true villain. I know you don't ever want to put no, you Arnold all, in a You guys always want to make him the villain in Let, these movies. Let's do it. It'll be the best bad movies ever have the greatest villains in them. Because you cannot that. have a fantastic protagonist without a good villain. Would you say this guy was not a good villain? I mean, I absolutely I hate hated him. the guy. I absolutely oh, yeah, hate him, but he was a tool. Listen to me. Bowen, I did not care about your code. You could take that code and ram it up your ass because I just said it because I wanted to get it out like vomit. Okay, and now I'm going to kill you. Oh, crap, a dragon! Ah! Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> just be ridiculous, man. Nailed it. No. You can make him Bowen. You make him Sean Connery and he's got him stuck in his mouth. It'd be hilarious. That whole scene would be 10 times better. <laughs> right. You've been hurting my teeth for Be awesome, dude. Come on now. No, it'd be great. And at the end when he's flying in, or he's like, Listen, you have got to kill me. Kill me now. Here I am. Do it. Just like at the end of Predator, dude. Yeah. And as Aiden's running, kill me. I'm here. Do it. Kill me now. Come on, man. The spot in the river where it was shallow, what do you, what do you have said? Get to the chopper? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I cannot sink any lower. It's mud. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, and then, guys. And then all of a sudden, the predator would be just like in the, the tree. We couldn't see him yeah. because he's covered in mud. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He'd be invisible. You know what? He'd be invisible to the dra- We got the five finest dragon hunters. They're all predators. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You sold me on right, it. I'm in. We'll go with your route. There Arnold would make this better. On, I suck man. at everything. No. Right. We'll or, with- or. Uh, the other thing I thought of, remember in True Lies where he's thumb wrestling uh, his daughter and his yeah. wife and he's got that dumb look on him. Ah, you you. Then I just thought of him as Brock doing the thumb doing wrestling, the thumb wrestling snapping yeah. arms and stuff. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, we, snapping we're nuts, having a good him time. Over, you know? Throwing him over his head when that's he's right. done with him. That's right. Be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it would. Thank nope, you. Dragon. Sorry, I was imagining that going, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Uh, Sir Hitman said, my replacement would be the part of Brother Gilbert. I think it would be funny to hear him doing the poetry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Listen, I'm going to write a poem for you. You are the finest knight of all time. You are the greatest warrior I've ever seen. Uh, thou art the greatest. Uh, thine is the glory of the... Ah, oh, crap, I cannot think of anything. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> See, I can't do the voice, but there once was a knight from Nantucket. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Bowman said, I would love to see Arnold as every villager in the cannibal... Vi- the- oh, they call them cannibals because of the meat thing. Yeah. Yeah. Meat. Just hearing a hundred Arnold say, meat, 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 over and over again, that'd be hilarious. 
Uh, and Mike Harding goes, Arnold is one of the Dragon Slayers. They didn't have a big part, but maybe beef up the role and throw in some classic Arnold one. We can't have Arnold getting like, shooting himself with an arrow. You know, the one that got away. You can, uh, yeah, he'd be the number one number dragon one, yeah. slayer. He'd be the one getting taken out by the basket. He accidentally killed six extra dragons that came through that weren't even part of the movie. I imagine they killed that other dragon slayer. They just cut it out of the movie. There's no way that one got away. No. Donnie Miles said that he would replace Bowen, uh, Dennis Quaid's character. When I consider Arnold for any role, all I do is pine for a third Conan-type movie where our favorite Austrian gets a shot at dragon hunting. Uh, he would shine this up oh, quite nicely. He punches the freaking dragon the right dragon in the face. He punches the dragon right in the face. everything. <laughs> Horse, but then Brother Gilbert would be dragon. like, no, dude, this is legit. I saw him, I literally saw him punch a dragon to right. death. Okay. That's why there are no dragons. That's why there's no yeah. dragons left. Right? It could kill you now, and he just cocks his hand back, right? It would have awesome. been a short film. He and would, then he at would the end, out, all though. he has to do is punch him in the heart, punch Draco in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Done. He just, he, Temple of Doom style, just <laughs> up to his wrist, just right through. Rip it out. Rips yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. But sadly, we didn't get that movie. We got Dennis Quaid yeah, acting like a cardboard cutout through this entire thing. You think it would have been better with Randy Quaid? Could you imagine? Yeah. That would have been amazing. You know, that <laughs> comedy bits might have hit better if it was Randy Quaid. <laughs> that would have been real nice, Clark. Real nice, Clark. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. How about we get to some awards and we'll uh, start talking about the uh, award we give out for the most intense performance in the movie. The one that we have named after the most intense actor ever, Mr. Will Patton himself. You want a war? I'll give you a war. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. That's right. Nobody was more intense than Will Patton, even when he was delivering comedic gems like this. What are you doing with a gun in space? Come on. Just... He's so <laughs> That's serious. even intense. Even that was intense. Dripping with intensity. What are you doing with a gun in space? All right. What are you, what are you doing with a gun in space? He's so serious about it. What are you doing without a gun in space? Right. Why wouldn't you have a gun in space? Yeah. Clint, who's your well, nominee for the Will Patton Award? Dina? Dina Meyer? Dina? All right. She, uh, like, even that first scene where it wasn't as, like, she's not trying to rile up anybody, but she was uh, the little girl scared, yeah. comes out and everything, and then, like, trips into and falls trying to not uh, be discovered, so to speak. And yeah. I think that was everything. Every part she was in, I think, was pretty uh, hardcore and Trying to do the world right. a favor. Yeah. Try to convince people the whole way through. Okay. I don't, I don't disagree. I mean, I thought she did a great job in the yeah. movie. Um, Sir Hitman said, uh, my Will Patton goes to the one and only Sir Sean Connery. Love Sean Connery in any movie he's in. So that's a vote for Dina Meyer and a vote for Sean Connery as we go over to Mr. Mel Vandy. I, I had to go with Pete Postlewaite okay. for Gilbert because uh, the guy was just at 11. Yeah, the whole time. whole time. And again, don't disagree. Lots of good picks in this one, I feel like. Uh, Josh said, look, this award goes to the late, great Sean Connery for Draco. Even though it was just his voice and combined with the expressive animation, it makes for one of the best dragons, if not the best dragon in cinema. Woo! Hot take there from Josh Bowman. I don't know if it's the best dragon ever Just because ever you don't agree cinema. with it doesn't make it a hot take. It could hey, just be the uh, take. Well, saying I enjoyed the performance is a take. Yeah. But saying it's the best dragon ever in cinema is a, is a hot take, I would say. There's been lots of dragons portrayed in cinema. Name one. Uh, how about the dragons from Game of Thrones? How about never Pete's saw dragon? It. I was gonna say Pete's dragon. Never, never saw. How Game about of Thrones. the dragon from Dragon Tales? How about the dragon? How about the guy from Dragon Wars? The snake, the Amugi. Yeah, yeah the no, Amugi? this was better. Okay. Only better. What about <laughs> Double Dragon? The Luck Dragon from Never Ending Story. Never Falcor. Yeah. What's that? Falcor. Never Falcor. Never Ending Story. <laughs> never saw Fal. You've never saw Never Ending Story? No. And you called me an uncultured swine. I know what a pudding is. <laughs> but you of. don't know what Falcor is? <laughs> <sighs> All right, so we got two votes for Sean Connery, one for Pete Postlethwaite, and one for Dina Meyer. Uh, Mueller, who you got over there, buddy? Um, I was between a couple on this one. Okay. Dina Meyer and Sean Connery. Ultimately, 
Give me Sean Connery. All right. back. That's a third Sean Connery vote. Uh, Mike Hardy went with David Thewis, uh, adult iron, and he was just so hateable with his stupid scarecrow haircut. <laughs> Played a fantastic <laughs> villain. He did look like a scarecrow. God, that he sucked. Yeah, he sucked. He terrible. Uh, I also went with Dave uh, Thewis, so that's two votes for adult iron. I just thought the dude was he whether or not it worked, I don't know, but he was really going for it, and some of his pretty intimidating, you know, I'll think one up for you, and how motherly of you, and all that. I thought he did a really good job. So we got a we got a couple people with two votes here, but we got three right now for Sean Connery. Uh, as we go to Donnie Miles, who went with Brian Thompson as Brock. No one took this film more seriously than our favorite Cobra villain. And while his accent was ridiculous and he wasn't featured much, his performance conveyed passion for the role. His over-the-top gusto, gusto gets my vote in a movie that was really lacking in the acting department. And I I agree. I like Brian Thompson in this. But ultimately, Sean Connery is going to win the Will Patton Award. And a close a close matchup there. Votes, of, votes are really spread out. A lot of decent choices. Yeah, but with eight votes, only getting three got the win for yeah. that one. That's how spread out it was. So, pretty good. Uh, all right, the next award we give out is the is probably the most coveted and and fought over award, the one that most people want. It's the Steven Seagal trash can full of dirt award that we give out to whoever the worst actor is in the movie. Trash can, oh trash can, it's a trash can full of dirt. Yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. Love is eternal, and that's, that's a long, long time. time. Dragons live forever, and that's a long time. I'm a dragon. I invented <laughs> dragons. I used to have a dragon as a pet, that's but he right. died. In Japan, when I was an Aikido master, I rode a dragon to the dojo every day. But no one saw because I rose up. I woke up earlier than everybody in the whole world. Because you got to do that to get ahead. That's right. It's the only way you can win. <clears throat> uh Clint, who's love, your, who's love your may never die, but dragon slayers do. <laughs> uh, these guys were just garbage. I'm going to lump them all together and put them in the can. All right, yeah, that's the yeah, five that's dragon one. slayers. Um, normally, I'd say playing your flag, but I'm not going to even disagree with that one. Uh, the hitman goes. Brian Thompson is my trash can award winner. His acting as Brock is sadly lacking any true depth of emotion. I couldn't disagree more, but you know, John, I give you that you're, you're you're right to pick who you want. I like Brian Thompson. He, I'm never going to accuse him of being a great actor, but yeah, I I could see why you'd vote for him for sure. So we got one for the Dragon Slayers, one for Brian Thompson. As we go to Mel Vandy. Lee Oaks for Young Einan. Young Einan. Screw that. <laughs> Completely reasonable. <laughs> Just, I mean. I, I don't care if, if he was the greatest actor ever, but that haircut, dude, we're going to feed a child to this trash can and throw him into the well of souls here with all the other bad performances. It's, oh, it's, I shouldn't have even cracked when, that lid open. It's starting to stink. Yeah, <laughs> it I, wouldn't be the first time. So many bad performances are starting to reek. You're going to throw a kid in here? Well, yes. All right. I, I can see why Bob does not like child actors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. You sucked. All right. I know you're like 40 now, no, but no clear, no clear way to state it other than that. Uh, Josh said, this is almost impossible for me, but since I have to plant a flag, I will give it to Kyle Cohen, the boy on the field who said, father, father, look, when Draco arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm dumping this on a child with two seconds of dialogue because everyone else in the cast I loved. Wow, Josh. Wow. Wow. He That's loved amazing. Young Einan? That poor kid. No, I, he must have loved Young Einan. He dumped on some peasant kid who had one line in the entire movie. And he just, Josh just sat in his living room and went, boo! <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he saw him, dude. Uh, look, That'd here's who I'm going with. Uh, Dennis Quaid. I, I don't, again, this is not a career achievement award. He was bad in this movie. He couldn't pick an accent. Uh, not any of his emotion landed with me. Anytime he said anything, I was like, whatever. I, it just it just didn't hit. None of it did. This is not a great performance on on his list of of films. This is going to be if it just ranking up his performance towards the bottom of his career. It's bad. Some super bad acting from Dennis Quaid. Uh, Mike Harding said, I didn't find anyone in this movie to be terrible, but I guess I'll go with Hulk Hogan and Santa with muscles. All right, look. <laughs> this, this has to stop. No, no, that's fair <laughs> enough. That's that a great joke Mike Harding came up yes. with. <laughs> oh. Or Lee Oaks, Young Einan, he says, is his backup option. Hey! So that's a second vote for Lee Oaks. 
as young Einan as we go to Ryan Mueller. You suck, kid. <laughs> Fun fact, I just looked. Lee Oaks was 22 in this movie. No, he was He's not. He born in 1974. No excuse! No, really hold on. no excuse. That little kid was 22? He was 22. Shut the front door. Yeah. <laughs> Gangly little dork. <laughs> like, Why is the, that making me hate him even more now? Oh, because he's 22 acting that horribly. All right. Is that who you're going with? Well, honorable mention goes to Einan's barber. <laughs> <laughs> valid. <laughs> 100 percent valid. Tell, tell the barber you're tired of looking like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I I had in my mind Dennis Quaid, I, just because it was such an, just a bad performance from him. That yeah. None of his comedy hit. It you know some of the lines that were more comedic lines weren't really yeah. delivered all that greatly. And then I was like, oh, is it? But is it Lee Oaks as young Einan, stupid haircut? Now that I know he's twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. I think That's... I'm gonna go with Lee Oaks ultimately. All right, Woo-hoo! that's the third vote. And Donnie Miles also went Lee Oaks as young Einan. I almost gave this to Dennis Quaid, just like you. He, yeah. So Dennis Quaid coming in a close second here, uh, an actor that I absolutely love, but Oaks was just goofy enough to take the prize. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason this dude had a short acting career. Uh, so ultimately, that means that Lee Oaks is going to win. Young Einan, get in the trap. Get in the trash can. No. I think that's who Wesley Willis actually wrote the song about. Maybe. Cut the mullet? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, my gosh. It's like not even party in the back. It was party all around. <laughs> the uh, next award we give out is to a minor character in the movie, not a main character, that was an improvement on the film just because they were there. Who made the movie better in an unsung role? It's the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? Then there are those few who are. Are you still kind of a badass karate boy? All right, Clint. I'm going to go with the mom. She was uh, so hardcore, wanted to save her kid, everything. Yeah, it seemed over the top at the beginning, and you hate the fact that she saved her son, who should have been really, really late term. (laughs) Um, (laughs) No. But like legitimately she turns around, finds out that she made a mistake, uh the whole nine yards, buys these dragon slayers to the finally kill land. her son because she knew it should have been really, really, really late term is better than no term at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um So maybe not the I, reason. All right. See I'm that I, the wife. I, so you're going with the queen then? I'm going with the queen. Okay. <laughs> All right, awesome. Read the room, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know James's idea here. Sir Hitman, <laughs> Sir Hitman goes, uh, my unsung hero goes to Pete Postlethwaite as Brother Gilbert. His funny line of just shooting the guy in the butt was my favorite line in the entire movie. Let's a vote for Sir Gilbert as we go to Mel Vandy. I went with Eva Vegmilkova for uh, Felton's Minx. Who in the hell is that? I don't know, but she's pretty hot from the IMDb. Okay, but you don't even know who she is in the movie. I mean, she's in the movie. <laughs> you just went through the IMDb and picked the hottest picture? Yeah. Are you actually going with her? Uh, No, actually, I'll go with okay. uh, King Arthur's voice. King Arthur's voice. <laughs> Inspiring. Right. Awesome job, John guys. John Gilgan. John Gilgan. Killed it, man. What a great job there. Uh, Josh Bowen said, uh, Bowman said, this is almost impossible for me, but since I have to plan, oh, I'm wrong. He goes, quick shout out to Lee Oaks for playing young (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Joffrey before Joffrey was cool to hate, but my nominee for this award goes to the late great Pete Postlethwaite. Brother Gilbert was a joy whenever he was on screen. I particularly enjoyed all of his scenes in the forest battle. So that's two votes for Pete, one for the queen and one for King Arthur's voice. I also went with Pete Postlethwaite. I thought he was the most enjoyable character in the movie. He was only in what, maybe you think three, four scenes out of the whole thing, but every time he was in there, I was enjoying myself more than when he wasn't there. So to me, it shows clearly that he made the movie better, and I wish he'd been in more of the film. Mike Harding also went Pete Postlethwaite. I've never seen a bad performance from this guy. He was used for comic relief mostly, but delivered when it was time to be serious as well. So it four votes in for Pete. It may be a foregone conclusion, but for posterity. So I was between two. 
Yeah. The Queen and and Pete. Ultimately, I'm going with Pete because I think you kind of nailed it, James. Yeah. He, I enjoyed the movie more when he was on screen. I don't think the mom, the Queen, was on screen enough for me. I liked her character. Yeah. But I think just some of the comedic stuff that was in there worked because Brother Gilbert was in there. Perfect. All right. Uh, and Donnie Miles also to wrap it up went Pete Postlethwaite as Gilbert with six out of eight votes. An actor who always makes films better did all he could do for this one, but all he ended up doing was making me want a movie about him and his travels and writings without the rest of the cast. In Dude, this I want a, a hip hop video with Brother Gilbert. <laughs> Dry, well, I <laughs> dropping, wanted to hear him drop dropping the, some lyrics. Drop the lyrics about Bowen, man. Yeah. We never got the final release. When's that going to drop? Well, it can't drop now. Gilbert's the true OG. That's the way he is, the true, true OG. OG. So congratulations to uh, Pete Postlethwaite for being the winner of the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. All right. And now, guys, we get to come to a time when we are going to be doing things a little bit differently here. And so we'll just explain this now. And as we go forward, you'll see how this kind of evolves. We, I, I hate personally, I have a thing about getting stagnant. I hate it. I don't like the idea of just doing the same thing forever because I think that's how you stagnate. And so I'm always looking at ways to change, to iterate, to come up with new things, to, you know, things have grown uh, organically where we've added awards and changed things kind of as it has just come about. And I think it's time for another change. One of the things that I, I've often felt, at least lately, uh, that maybe it's time to move it into something else is with three favorite things. Uh, it seems often we're all just kind of saying the same thing, uh, the same three things, the same thing with the people, the, the patrons that are running in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start phasing out three favorite things. It's not going to be completely going away. In fact, I'm going to, I've picked one thing just because for the rest of this month, the patrons have, that have submitted awards have been asked to supply them. So I'm at least going to pick one of each of their favorite things and I'll read out for the patrons. But going forward, if I want you guys to have an opportunity and for the panelists here as well to say the things that you really liked about the movie. But I think there's a good spot for that and that's in your final thoughts. And so if there are really great things you liked about it, work those into your final thoughts when you're giving your final review for the movie. Say, hey, I like the movie and this is why because I thought this, this, and this were cool. It seems like a natural place for that to go as opposed to having its own segment if that makes sense. Sure. So that's what we're going to be doing going forward is we're going to be phasing out three favorite things, but I'll be, like I said, doing some of the patron stuff that they wrote in because they took the time to do that, but we'll be replacing it with some other things. Uh, and, and some of the things will be there all the time and some of them won't be. We might be interchanging some things, but one of the things we're going to be doing here, uh, we'll get to in a second after I share just a few of the favorite things that some of our patrons said. And so here we've got Sir Hitman who said the one of his favorite things was the hog's head bag, the hog's head bag they used to put the gold in at the village where the river is too shallow. That yeah, thing was cool. It was a was whole cool. pig head yeah. that had been made into a purse. Some villager gave up her purse so they could give them. I thought it was pretty some sick. Coins. I, like, I kind of want a, a money bag a made out of it's a pig's a fashion head. statement. I think they stole that from the Silence of the Hams. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Are you about a size 14? <laughs> I want a fanny pack made out of a pig's head. That would be go. awesome. Wouldn't that be a pig's ass? No, a oh. fanny pack. Yeah, exactly. Not a pig, not an ass pack. A fa <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know with you where this stuff comes from, honestly. A fanny pack? Yes. Fanny is British But if you don't ass? wear one on your ass, you wear a fanny pack on the front. No. No. <laughs> you wear a fanny pack on your ass? That's yes, why that's they call it what they call it. <laughs> Have you ever seen it's not just a someone clever wearing name. a fanny pack strapped across their butt? Not if they don't want the <laughs> stolen out of it. That's what I'm saying. So these two are acting like I'm an idiot for he saying you don't wear fanny backwards. packs on the backside. Uh, and I got looking over you thinking I'm digging crazy pills. Crisscross will make you jump, jump. Because you're wearing. You your don't wear back. fanny packs on your backside. That's why they call them what they call them. That it's is, literally called an ass pack. Okay, maybe that's why they call it that, but no one wears <laughs> it that way. Just because you do it wrong doesn't make it right. <laughs> Dude, wear it on your hip. You wear it on your hip or the front. Right. Okay. Like, if you're your parents, you wear it on the front. If you're still kind of cool, you wear it on the side. Yeah. I'm, uh, you'd, or if you're still kind of cool, you just don't wear them. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Touche. <laughs> One of Josh Bellman's favorite things is that I really love the score in this movie. It didn't try to be overly intense and knew where to be lighthearted and knew when to have a moving swells for the more emotional scenes. Yeah, the score wasn't bad. It was just was trying to do all of the work because the script and the actors weren't. Uh, Mike Harding said the Bowen and Einan sword fight in the river is his favorite and also the most intense scene in the movie. It sets Einan up as a believable threat and shows just how evil he's always been. I thought that was really good too. Yep. And Donnie Miles said, I like the angle of communication between the dragon and the royals that they can approach the dragon without fear and have a give and take discussion. Also, the dragon and dragon slayer co-conspirator plot was unique and fun. Yeah, so there's things to enjoy and unique things about the movie that I appreciated myself personally. Here's what I want to start doing. And again, we won't do this in every episode because not every episode we have an opportunity to. But when the opportunity presents itself, I want to start building a Mount Rushmore for actors that appear in multiple BMR movies, okay? To the extent that it's possible, to the extent that you've seen the movies that we've talked about. But in, you know, for instance, Michael Dudikoff, we've done four Dudikoff movies. So we will be able to build a Mount Rushmore of Michael Dudikoff performances. Right now, it's all four American Ninja movies because those are the only four that we have. But we would rank them one, two, three, and four based on his performances, okay? Uh, and then now once we do a fifth Michael Dudikoff movie, one of those movies has to come off the Mount Rushmore and the other one has to slot in somewhere. Gotcha. And so we'll be carrying this through as something that is a serialized element of the show that comes through and builds over time from show to show and isn't something that just stands for each individual single episode. Right. Does that make sense? Sounds good. Sure. So we have two actors today that we have to add to their Mount Rushmore's here because this was a third movie for two different actors. So we'll start with Jason Isaacs. Jason Isaac has appeared in Resident Evil, Electra, and Dragonheart. And so we would figure out ourselves like where these movies slot in. And I think for this one, unless you guys disagree with me, it's obvious that Dragonheart out of the Jason Isaac movies we've done would be number one because it's the only real part he's played. But beyond that, did you like him getting killed in the first second of Electra better than him being the hazmat suit guy in Resident Evil? And where should we rank these one, two, three? One flip a coin. <laughs> uh, basically, I mean, Electra was terrible, but he was not part of the terribleness of it. I mean, I thought he, you know, did a hell of a job getting killed early on in that movie. No, I agree. I mean, Personally, I would, I would go I'd probably pick yeah, Electra too. Because I would rather Resident not watch Electra the most. I would say that's three. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because he, we can't give it five yet. For it. He probably saw the because what? And said, yeah. Because we can't give it five yet. We can't. Not yet. Right. No. Eventually, it'd probably be the first one thrown off. Yeah. Yeah. But right now, I would go. I would go Dragonheart for Jason Isaac, then Resident Evil, then Electra number three. Yes, because Electra sucked. All right. Seems reasonable. Perfect. The other yeah. actor that we have is Brian Thompson, who, as I said, appeared as the villain in Cobra. He has been Brock in this movie. And then also, if you remember Three Amigos, he was one of the German guys that ends up having the quick draw match with, I think, Steve Martin okay. and ends up getting yeah, yeah. shot. And so I think that would be the third out of those performances. His little part is the German. But which one did you guys like better, him as Brock in Dragonheart or as the main bad guy in Cobra? To me, it's Cobra, Dragonheart, just because he had more of a part, and then Three Amigos because it wasn't in that one as much. I'm totally fine with that ranking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the mayor on that as well. Yeah. Cobra, Dragonheart, <clears throat> and then Three Amigos. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Oh, good for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is the Mount Rushmore's. And as we add, because this show is going to be around for a long time. And so as we build this and we have more actors that we're doing more and more movies for, we're going to have more and more arguments and discussions about which ones should end up We've got on the top four. We've got to get Jack Dean a channel now to track this for us. Track the Mount, the Mount Rushmore's yeah. for the actors as we go through this. Perfect. There is another element that we're going to be adding to the final rating, but we can't do that until we do. We're going to end up having a big live stream um, coming up here soon that we'll have to build out the structure for this other award. And then once we do that, we can start doing it in the episodes, but we have to go through um, kind of this long process before we can do that. So that's just a little teaser for now. And as soon as we get that live stream kicked off, which we're working on building the program in order to do the visuals for that live stream, then we can jump into the rest of it. Mm. So mm -hmm. take that for what it is. Cool. What? I figured it out. Did you? I believe so. Okay, well, tell me after, and I'll tell you yeah. if you're right. Okay, perfect. Uh, what? It's time to give our final rating, guys. We have to ultimately land the plane here on something. Is this 
a bad movie. Are the critics right? They have got this as a rotten score, but it's close. It's on the line. We've got audience members are even close. It's 60-40. Good. They're 60-40 good. The critics are like leaning bad. Who is correct and who's not here? Clint, we're going to start with you. Is Dragonheart a good or bad movie? Well, a bad movie is a bad movie, and a good movie is a good movie, but I think that a bad movie that rules is a fantastic rating. I think that that is a very prestigious thing, right? Because great movies are great. Good movies are good. Yeah. I think that this movie, objectively, it's it's not – it's got problems. It definitely has problems. It's not perfect by any stretch. Yeah. But it's not bad enough to be bad, and it's not rules. So, I mean, I can't even just blanket it in in the what as our middle as a bad movie. I think it's a good movie, but I don't think it's as good as a bad movie that would rule. Okay. It's I, I need my Rolodex again from my 16 <laughs> so levels. So you're saying it's neither. It's neither. It, okay. It's a good movie like that I said, sucks. It's a good movie that's eh. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, maybe it's, it's a, a good movie, movie that sucks. It's a movie that's movie, but it does have its problems. I, I enjoy it when it's on. It's not something I'm going to like uh, if, if I was sick, you know, <laughs> and I'm sitting on the couch okay. and I'm just I'm, I want to watch something, but I'm not going to want to scroll through the tablet yeah. or something yeah. else and do something else. Maybe do some paperwork or whatever. Yeah. And it's on. It would be OK for that um, just because it's not totally attention grabbing you can look for the four scenes that you enjoy and you can listen to sean connery's voice so it's either red october or this for just listening to sean connery and not watching so it's a good movie that sucks <laughs> it's a good movie that's eh. okay yeah all right that's ryan farrell's I mean, like sucks. fourth yeah. created it thing that, right remember he created that fourth category of right it's well, a good I, movie like that said, sucks. I, I did that right off the bat you yeah know, you were giving me hell about 16 of them yeah well, maybe i need a well, seven yours had right. like a slide rule and you had yeah. to multiply and well, and then, no and then spin the wheel and try and stop it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I tried to get fancy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had the one with the popomatic bubble, and I you didn't like that, that one either. We can, so we can go back to that. I'm starting to soften on that whole thing. <laughs> uh, look, Sir Hitman goes, my final rating for this is a good movie, full stop. I enjoyed this movie so much, I'm going to buy this movie now after renting it on Prime Video. So... Dude saw it and loved it that much, and which is fine. Uh, hey, John, what do I say? Totally. Like what you like, yeah. man. It's like all good. Don't like. Just because we don't like something, and I'm not even saying everybody here at the table feels the same way I do. If it weren't for people liking the unlikable, yeah. I wouldn't be married. That's, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. How would you even have a family right, right now? Right. She would have just run off like everybody else. Mel, where do you land on this film, buddy? I can't say it's... A good movie that sucks. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a good movie that I don't like. Okay. It's it. It, so it has a lot of redeeming. Yeah. Uh, objectively, it has a lot of redeeming qualities that I I sat there and watched it and and honestly I watched it back to back. Okay. But that's the only two times I'll probably watch it. Yeah. But it wasn't a bad movie. Yeah. So I can't say it's a bad movie that rules. All right, I, that's I can fine. I can say there's there's people that are gonna like it. I'm gonna say it's a good movie that I just didn't like. All right, so you see, you're starting to see how the ratings are bearing out because even just with the two of you, you're totally split on right. yourselves, and then the numbers have kind of bore that out. It's just a really interesting film that way, just to see how it kind of like. It's in this weird middle area. Right. <laughs> people have a hard time even quantifying it, myself included. Uh, our patrons haven't had a hard time qualifying it. Josh Bowman <laughs> said, this is a good movie. For me, a great movie. I feel like we don't have too many of these family-friendly fantasy movies anymore that we have both the charm and grit that this movie provides. I don't know. I'd stop short of saying it's got a lot of grit. Yeah. It's um, kind of dark. I've been watching this movie for almost 28 years now, and I'm still not tired of revisiting. So here's what we got with Josh, what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Nostalgia. Right. In it. And I think that's what it is, too. Like the nostalgia of it. I watched it when I was younger, not young, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the kid was in the room with me. My wife stayed. She watched it. Like this movie is thoroughly watchable. Yeah. 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 You're not going to seek it out unless, you know. Yeah. So what did Katie say? Katie actually, I mean, she's like, hey, it's way better than Garbage Pail Kids, but what really is it? I mean, like, legitimately, she had not a, a ringing endorsement, but no. not a terrible reaction to it, which, like, yeah. that's the best I could hope for because she doesn't like things specifically because I like them or yeah. because we're having to do it. I mean, like, that's the, the extent of her rebellion is to just disenjoy things. Oh, you like I know this? she likes oh, you like because no, I like it. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. I got you. Um, all right, so that's two great movies. And Josh, I, I fully agree in, in that if I had watched it back then, 
I might feel totally differently. I think I started this by saying, I think Dragonheart is one of those movies where if you saw it at a certain age or at a certain time in your life, you probably love the crap out of this movie. We were too old at that time to really, you know, but if I was eight or nine and I saw this movie, I'm probably right here yeah. with Josh Bowman. Yeah. The dragon's way cooler, like, right, at eight. Love oh, yeah. this movie. Definitely. This is a great movie. The problem is I was 44 when I saw it for the first time. Yeah, me too. Was like a couple days ago, right? <laughs> so I just don't have those feelings for it. And so for me, the adult themes don't really land. As a kid, you're like, dragons, woo Like, I, you know, yeah. cool. Um, and then you attach yourself joke. to things. That yeah, and a butt joke. Yeah. Even <laughs> now, as you watch it back, you're like, "Oh, this is great." But I didn't. I didn't. Enjoy, I, w- I don't think I'd ever watch it again. And so that's kind of my metric for if something's good. So I'm going to say bad movie because I have no interest in ever watching it again. I think the perf- in this case the script isn't even. Usually I blame the script. I think the script is pretty good. I think the acting's terrible and this is actually where it fails is on the performances of Dennis Quaid and the, and and ugh, the villain was okay none of the big moments really hit or land i i am very i'm an easy mark for these kind of movies i, I get into the stuff the like the rousing nature of these battles and let's go and overthrow the bad guy and i i wasn't at any point like woohoo let's go i think this movie goes through as it is now as the storyboard, what they make of it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The For next, sure. the next run through on yeah. this would be yeah. fantastic. So I'm going to say rules. I, I didn't get to that part yet, but I, it, it's a bad movie. I'm going to say rules because I think there are enough enjoyable elements, like Brother Gilbert, like Sean Connery, where I'm like, I don't want to give it the bad movie full on because I don't think it deserves it. But I also would never watch it again. Does that That's make sense? where I was. Was like, yeah. it's a bad movie because it has its problems, but it right. doesn't rule because I don't absolutely dig it. So I had to right. go the opposite direction. I think I a bad movie saying. that rules is way too high of praise. Yeah. Because that is putting your personal stamp of dig it. Yeah. And you can't bad movie that rules something if yeah. you don't dig it. Then I'm then I'm going to say a bad movie full stop. Then. Yeah, you kind of have That's to. what I'm going to do. Uh, all right, Mike Harding said, this movie packs a surprising amount of story into its hour 43 runtime. It has a good blend of action, comedy, and heart, backed by beautiful scenery and a fantastic score. For the most part, the CGI holds up and the practical effects look good. 12-year-old me loved this movie and so does 39-year-old me. See, we, we caught you there again. You, you just outed yourself, Mike, along right. with Josh Bowman. Right. I would have loved this if I saw it when I was 12. I'm, yeah. I'm serious. Uh, he goes, this is a great movie that's awesome. So you see just the difference it's and I've it just I'll continue saying it for the rest of when you watch a movie is as important as how good the movie actually is. Absolutely. And 100%. what your mindset is when you watch it. Exactly. So uh we See? throw it to you, Mueller. See, if you hadn't been subjected to those damn earnest movies when you were a kid, you'd hate them too. <laughs> I I probably wouldn't love them as much as I do. Yeah. Yeah. I I think my feeling's the same as everybody at the table, which is I had to suspend the dog skill for this one because I just didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know where to put it. That's fine. It's like the dog crapped on the deck. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it, like the it ate chocolate and did Easy enough to wash on off. The deck. But. Yeah, I look, I I think there's some I you know, I don't get some of these takes, but like what you like, patrons. Yeah. I mean I've got great oceanfront property in Kansas for you too. <laughs> um what a shot at the patrons. I love it. <laughs> Go ahead. It's, Sorry. Th- were there some comedic elements? Yes. I think the only ones that really worked were when Brother Gilbert was on scene. Yeah. He was the mise en scene. Yeah. There you go, Farrell. Otherwise, anything Dennis Quaid, some of his lines, they tried to give him some comedic lines. They didn't work. I think Sean Connery, you know, did his thing. I thought he was fine. Yeah. Uh, I I think overall, this movie, to me, had a little bit of trouble deciding what it was. I, I don't see it as like a, a fantasy action comedy. I think they stuck comedy in there because they didn't know what to do. Yeah. It kind of seemed to me because so much of it didn't work. Um, I think you had, you know, some of the action, like we talked about, some of the action sequences were really good. I liked the sword fights. I liked, you know, kind of the dragon flying around kind of doing his thing, even oh, though it's yeah. CGI. I mean, but that, you know, still, I thought pretty good for the time. I mean, we did escape from LA, which was a CGI nightmare. And that was came out the same year. Right. Um, so obviously they didn't use the same company. Right. And story. I think the story is there. I think it's a decent story. So that's where I'm hesitant. Yeah. I, I don't know that I can really call it a bad movie. 
it doesn't rule because I these don't politicians think... just keep droning out, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah. No, it's he's trying to split a hair, which I, I which know. is kind of what everybody's done here. And, and, yeah. It's, yeah. and it's really hard because it's it's it has its problems. There's just yeah. holes in it. But is it a bad movie objectively? No. Is it a bad movie that rules? No, because I'm not gonna probably ever watch it again. I <laughs> I obviously forgot everything from when I'd seen it way back when. Yeah. When I would have been like I don't know sixteen, seventeen when this came out, I'm a, I think I'm gonna do a clean. Just like it's a good movie, it's meh. I'll never watch it again. All right, you I, get those movies it's, like, dude, you gotta watch it. Yeah, this is a movie that if you want to watch it, go ahead. I mean, go there's yeah, I mean, there's movie and they're absolutely horrible movies. I'll be like, dude, you gotta watch this thing. It's so horrible. <laughs> yeah. Laser blast. <laughs> not Dragon Wars. That I come on, son. <laughs> yeah. Not Dragon Wars. Right. Don't ever watch that piece of crap. But yeah, this is just one of those where, and maybe if, like you said, maybe if we were had grown up with it, so to speak, and we weren't in our <laughs> mid to late teens at the point we've seen it, and or now as adults, yeah, it might have a different feeling to it. But <clears throat> maybe if the dragon had pulled out a. AK-47 while he's flying around and start well, shooting if, guns. Well, if you load stuff. the dragon up with a couple Sidewinders, saying, maybe dude. some <laughs> Mavericks. Be awesome, yeah, bro. Taking out straw huts with Sidewinders. That's right. What yeah. are you doing with a gun in space? All right. <laughs> can you fire a Sidewinder while still on the ground? <laughs> we'll see if that, that dragon, dragon can. What, what's that dragon doing yes. with a gun in the sky? <laughs> yes, you can. I don't know. All I've right. never tried. <laughs> uh, Donnie Miles, to wrap this up, after three glowing reviews from our patrons, Donnie said, bad movie. Oh, Donnie. This will no doubt land me on the hate list of many listeners and crew, but this movie just didn't have the right vibe. It felt childish. The effort to play modern with the medieval just doesn't do it for me. A few tweaks here and there could have pushed into rules territory, but I just didn't find it very enjoyable in its current form. Bad, non-existent accents, overly dramatic music, corniness at every turn, massive confusion about how strong and mighty dragons actually are or aren't. And a dearth of good acting led me to the conclusion that there are several other dragon movies I'd rather watch. Wow. Hot take. Fair enough. Donnie, I agree with you, buddy. <laughs> so don't worry about uh, catching hate or flag. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you yeah. might from the other patrons, but you're not going to get it from us. No. I think it's very interesting how this all kind of shook out with yeah. the panel here, given where the numbers were, because it's a strange movie that doesn't really fit like a lot of the movies yeah. that we've done, into a certain box. Right. So we'll leave it to you guys. I mean, let us know what you think about Dragonheart. Send us an email. This show is trash at gmail.com. It, it, were you wrong? Most of the patrons here love the movie. Do you guys all love the movie? Send us a message. We're, we're interested to see. This but, is this is what, one, 160? Yeah. So this will be like episode 160 No, this is episode like 151. 151. Mm -hmm. Yes. So episode 151 coming out right now. Almost three years. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, almost. A long time. So like <laughs> this is episode five. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. If we were doing like early on, we'd be yeah. like, this movie is terrible. <laughs> now I'm not so sure. We've seen some trash. This is much better than some of the trash we've seen. And I think that's what but. makes it so hard to place it yeah. somewhere. Right. And next week, we're going to be talking about a movie that is also been, people have been kind of split on. And this is one where the critics, again, it's rotten. The audience, I think, likes it more than the critics did. It's one of these movies that was a sequel to an absolute classic, and people probably judged it harshly against Jurassic Park, but The Lost World just doesn't have the same like status as the original Jurassic Park does. But you can be... Half as good as Jurassic Park and be amazing. Yeah, no, right. that's yeah. true because you're talking about an all time right. movie. Right. And so The Lost World came in and it was underwhelming. And so I haven't gone back to it in years. Right. I'm excited to watch Lost World again. Because if you're going to watch a again. dinosaur movie, yeah. you're going to watch Jurassic Park. Park. Exactly. I mean, you're, you, have, you don't watch Jurassic Park enough to where you're tired of it. So right. let's watch the second so one. So you're like, hey, let's turn on Lost World. And I mean, it's not that's... like Harry Potter. Again, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm a dork. Yeah. It's not like Harry Potter. <laughs> Right. Or the Hobbit stuff, you right? Know, or Lord of the Rings, even. Right. I'm going to watch all three of them, right. yep. or I'm going to watch all six of them, or you none know. of them, right? Or whatever. But I'm like I said, you know, you're going to watch uh, just an occasional dinosaur movie. That's right. It's yep. going to be the 
dinosaur. Right. And so we're going to have Ryan Maddell and Nicole Freer back in here because they both sat in for Jurassic Park. We did that on Good Movies Rule on yep. our Patreon. And so we're going to have them back plus another person to be talking now about Jurassic Park 2, essentially, which was <laughs> The Lost World with Jeff Goldblum. It was, it was on not that long ago, actually. I oh, was it? picked it up halfway through. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this one. Yeah, I think Julianne Moore is in it. Yeah. And yeah. and Pete Postlethwaite, uh, Brother Gilbert, two oh. two weeks in a row. Oh, he's going on. He was like a dinosaur he's hunter. Get we're going to need him Mount Rushmore here. We're going to need Rushmore here of Pete Postlethwaite movies. Whether Was he better in Lost World or in Dragonheart? We'll decide that next week when we talk about <laughs> that. But in the meantime, join us for Lost World. I just want to say thanks to Clint Bush and Mel Vandy and Ryan Mueller for coming in today and to the patrons that participated. We appreciate all of you guys, and we will catch you next week with Lost World. Is it good? Is it bad? We don't know. <laughs> We've determined nothing. Thanks for wasting your time with <laughs> us here at Bad Movies Rule. It does feel like ultimately yeah. we got nowhere with this. Right. It, this episode felt like it was dragon. Oh, dra oh hit him. The got last him. second we got from one to two. Oh, no. It's not, it's all right. It's better than zero like this. Yes. Yeah. Right? Man, oh, man. You know, there's two sequels to Dragonheart. I don't know if we need more to do those. I thought they were all dead. Two. No, apparently not. No. They found a Dragonheart, on some amber. New Beginning, I think, is the next one. So, there's, I mean, I think they're pretty recent, too, like 2018. Let's do it. Mike does not want us to do it, but we're doing it. We'll see you for the next Dragonheart movie. <laughs> <laughs>